Banford, which is one of the new Shimano reels. They're very light, and it's on a Loomis rod. But you can use whatever rod you want. But my ra line ratings are in that sort of 15, uh, 10 to 20 pounds. Yeah. Okay. So depends on brand. Depends on thickness. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got a quite a, a quite a heavy, stiff tip. You need to be able to pull them out of the snags and whatever else you, you, they're, they're going to run for, obviously. Um, Lengthwise, uh, if you uh, how many people use bait casters before I go any further? Okay, so quite a few of you do. Okay, so bait casters are really good. Um, keep it short though, guys, when you're barrel fishing. Oh, when you're jack fishing, sorry. Barrel fishing is easier longer. Um, the reason being, a lot of time you, you're throwing in under trees and stuff like that, you're doing a lot of close cover stuff. So if you get those skinny waters up in creeks and stuff like that, um, you don't have much room to play with long rods. And it's too hard to cast accurately with a long rod compared to a short rod. Short rods are much more accurate. Um, Line-wise, um, what do you use, Stuart? Uh, I use 15 braid, 25 litre. Yeah. That's me, yeah. So I use um, 20, that's 20 braid, um, and I use uh, normal, that's, I think that's 25 or 30 litre. Um, you do have fluorocarbon and normal litre in your bags. Um, just a quick important note is that with your fluorocarbon, and remember, for most of your lure fishing, so if it's 25 pound, you compare it to, say, 40 pound mono for the same abrasion resistance, but the thickness is 20% thinner. So it makes your lure swim better, makes less current, whatever, whatever, and it works much better and goes through the air better, whatever. So it's, uh, and when you're lure casting, definitely fluorocarbon, I think it's the pick. 100%, yeah. yeah. Um, as in line, um, we're not going for like 60 to 80 metre cast when we're fishing, we're only going for normally five to 20 metres, you know, max. So quite close. Um, and um, when it comes to that point in time and using, choosing a braid, go a braid that's stronger and not one that's thinner, okay? So thinness is important in leader because that's where the fish is going to be mostly looking. But when it comes up the line a bit further to your braid, it's much more important that you have something you can pull over a stick than something that's going to be thin and nice in the water. Yeah. Because the priorities go the other way. So um, in braids, in strong braids, um, traditionally um, you Power Pro and your fins and the American braids. Um, yeah, we're, we're obviously, the, the stronger braids are compared to the Japanese Dyneema braids, so they're actually made of spectra or, or different material like that. Um, and then the problem with them was that they were really thick, they're like rope. And most of them are only four ply, not eight. Um, and then um, Suffix bought this one out called 832. Has anyone used that yet at all? It's fantastic. So it is the Strongest in the world, actually, on abrasion resistance compared to any braid that you can put up against. Um, put on sandpaper and go like that, and it'll just outlast anything. Um, the beauty of it is, it is an eight, eight ply, and it feels like a Japanese braid, and it's a lot thinner. Not much thinner, but it's thinner <laughs> than the American one. So you get a softer, thinner, stronger braid. So if you get a, it's around about thirty-nine bucks a, a um, thing, couple of fifty meters, but stick around at twenty, thirty pound. And um, that's plenty strong enough, okay? I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Stuart. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, it's even if you, Dougie said trees and stuff, but 90% of the jack fishing around here is going to be around like pontoons and jetties and things like that. They've all got growth on them, so that abrasion resistance is a really big key factor. Yeah. Um, you will luck it out with like here occasionally, but mm. yeah, you're going to lose more than you catch, that's for sure. Yeah, if, when you fish around pontoons, they're still going to take around the poles um, and around boat skegs and rudders and whatever else on the back of a boat. Um, transducers are really bad um, if they're in the water. Um, and uh, if you are in... Uh, but the secret is you have to get your lure right in there. You need to learn to... See, actually, this time of year you should be practising your lure casting. Okay? And getting it right. You need to get right in that corner up that river it might be. And actually, you're better off doing a suicidal cast than casting too far away because you think you can't get it. You don't want to get caught in the, in the tree. Better to lose the lure to the tree than to than to not get a jack hit. You yeah. said lure, we do it actually, yes. <laughs> no, but it's true. It is true. But actually, Johnny says the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, Johnny yeah. does this seminar for us, so duh, and he's done it for us the last ten years, I think. But he's travelling around Australia at the moment. That's Johnny, the jack guy. He's a great bloke, and watch his um, stuff on YouTube. It's fantastic. He's a very good teacher. He's actually a teacher in real life too, by the way. But um, um, but yeah, so um. His saying is exactly the same, go right into that snag. And if you've got good line, you should be able to pull it out of the snag most of the time. Okay? Yeah. Um, you know, other things called tackle backs so that can get your lure back anyhow most of the time. You ever, everyone uses your tackle back for your lures? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
I hate selling them because it means we're not going to lure sale, but because they save about 90% of your lures. Yeah, they're good. Snow, they're fantastic. You get back shopping trolleys, push bikes, everything around bridges and that. Um, lures attached to it and it just pulls the whole thing up. Um, just the next outfit up, I use it heavier. Um, this is when I start bait fishing, okay? So um, still using like a four or 5,000 size reel. Um, my braids, I think it's 30 on there, um, and my lead is around about 30 as well. That's my light bait fishing rod. And, and I know this looks stupid, it looks like something you'd use outside in the deep. Uh, this is my heavy, oh, actually I use heavier than this, this is my medium. I didn't bring my heavy heavy. Um, this is my medium one. 50 pound braid, 60 pound leader, and uh, and 60 pound leader on the hooks, and I'm selling a couple of 5.0s together there in the hooks. Um, and I use a running sinker rather than sinker right on the bait. Jacks, Jewies don't mind sinker right down on the bait. Jacks don't like it for some reason. Well, that's what we found. Yep. So we get that one a bit later. Um, so um, we'll get into the lure fishing side of it. Any questions on the gear at all, guys? So 4,000, 5,000 size reel. You can use two and a half, but you need to up the ante on the line. But there's no point putting um, you know, 20 or 30 pound braid on two and a half thousand and setting it four kilos of drag. You're defeating. You can't fish it heavy enough to utilize the strength of the line. So um, you need to get a stronger drag, like eight kilos or whatever it might be. Jacks are really important. You've got to pull them out of that hole. But if you're in a boat, you've got to back the boat back or just Put your foot on the on the electric and pull yourself backwards and pull it away from the structure. Um, if you are land based, um, you run up the bank. Simple as that. <laughs> Unless you're lucky in a good spot where there's not too many snakes. I don't anything to add to that. Story. No, not really. No, no it's no. um, it's you got to be quick. Mm. Like the battles won in the first five seconds. That's a bit right. Very rarely yeah. do you get them up beside the boat and they take one more run and run you right on the pontoon or whatever and mm. straight back in the back. It's all done in that initial hit and. Yeah, you've got to turn the heads real quick. Yeah. Really quick. So how, how far should you leave your running sinker off your hook? Uh, uh, 60 centimetres? At least, yeah. 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 Just enough so I can swim yeah, it. Yeah. Well, oh, we'll go bait fish a bit later. I'll tell you yeah, about yeah, the yeah. secret bait. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's about right, mate. Yeah, definitely. Do you have the drag pretty much locked? Um, I have it fairly tight on my reels, but because a lot of times it's, it's very hard hit, as you probably know, and quite often it'll snap if your braids not if your knot's not too good, or if your braid's dodgy braid, or, or whatever it might be, and nicking in line from previous. Yeah. So you can be really careful to know, know the, the limit. Know the limit is yeah. the word I'm looking for, yeah. Yeah, like braid's really yeah. strong against like an even pressure, but if you get like any size line and just yeah. go bam, like crack, mm. it'll, um, yeah, it's a lot weaker. You really gotta learn to steer them out. Does that yeah. make sense? So pull the rod around real quick away from mm. whatever it might be, rather than fishing a hard drag and trying to hold it there. Because yeah. yeah. some, something's gonna give. Hopefully he turns, but it can also pull out of his mouth, can break the line, or many other things can happen. Yeah. I know good you know, all your knots are, but hopefully lots of knots work yeah. sometimes, but you want to make sure they work. Um, so yeah, pulling it either with the boat or steering it with your hand is really important. Yeah. yeah. And as Stuart said, it's got to be done straight away. Yeah. So a lot of time it's like, that's the best thing about jack fishing is you just, you just constantly winding, especially using plastics and stuff. You're not doing much action at all, and it's just a, it's just a bam, so quick. And you've got to mentally, straight away, pull him out of that structure, because he's going to go straight for it, you know. And Jenny Jacks are very clever, though. Even when I'm, when I'm trolling, they'll follow for maybe 30 metres until they know exactly an area in the area where they can ram the fish into the rock, whatever it might be. And at that point, that's when they hit you. And it's all over, it's so quick. It's like, they're like wahoo fishing, and just the line goes loose, and it's all over. Yeah, but anyhow, well, so we'll start the service. So Stuart was just up actually fishing yesterday? Yeah, I just went for a morning mm. fish yesterday because um, well, we had the seminar today, so I had to brush up on a few things. But I just used my flatty gear so because I had the heavy stuff at home and I want to do a bit of everything. So I just had light stuff, so six pound braid, 15 pound leader, very sporting. <laughs> not what we've talked about, it's not ideal, but um, that's what I had in the boat. So I just went around Paradise Point Canals and I got I got one and I lost another three and I only fished for two hours for them. So they were, it was good, it was nice and humid. Like this morning would have been really good as well. This morning is very humid. Yeah. yeah, you want like humid, you want heat, you want, they get fired up. Like the hotter it is, the better. Mm -hmm. Just before a storm or a rain event. And like yesterday I knew that we had a, a um, northerly change coming in and that rapid change of 
temperature is always really good. It trying to kind of triggers a bite. So, um, so I went up there and we, um, I had a bit of a fish, had a bit of a probe around, and um, yeah, it was it was good just for the first trip of the season. It was a bit of an eye opener. There was lots of fish around in the canal, so it was good. But um, yeah, ran my four rods and. Yeah, managed to get one on the plastic, but I had a couple of swirls on the top water too, so it was, yeah, it was so worthwhile. Tide? Tide. Yeah, a fish. Or... Um, so I like the last of the run out. Okay. So like that last of the run out, first of the run in. Right. Um, kind of drains off all the bank. Like so the fish have less area to go. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. It's when the waters are warmest, and that's yeah. when the bait fish are the most um, active, and so are the fish normally. Um, and if you can see that up late afternoon, like a low tide about six. Right on dark is, is like the perfect scenario. So you start fishing at five yeah. to about seven, start the run yeah. in, as Joey said. Um, although, you know, I've caught them run in high tide and everything, but some areas uh, high tide works better, like down in Korean Cove, you cast some boppers on the surface there, with little stick baits, or in the what rock wall there, I mean the retaining wall, um, that's a high tide spot, you know. So it depends on where you are, but um, generally speaking, um, yeah, the last of run out's yeah. the best, which you would have had Yesterday. About nine o'clock in the morning yesterday, something. It was about eight. Yeah. Eight, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, a little bit earlier. But yeah, so it's um it was I'll a really good... how far the canal was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was um I was pretty close to the mouth and mm. I like I started the I started the first pontoon, I think halfway along the canal I already had a fish, so and they just kept biting after that. Yeah. Mm. But um luck luck wasn't on my side. I got busted off once and pulled a couple of hooks, but that's because of the line. Yeah, too, like. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Light leader, mate. Yeah. Go light and get the bite, lose heaps of lures. But um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it was just on the day. Yeah, looking back on it, like I should have run the standard mm. 20, 25 litre. But, but this fish wrapped me around a crab pot and I managed to get it out with 15. So that's the important, as Doug was mm. saying before, that fluorocarbon. Sorry? A bit crab butter. Yeah, I wish. It was <laughs> off the distance. But um, mm. yeah, so yeah, it was good. Good abrasion resistance, even with 15. So. Yeah, yeah, so um, so has, have many people here done surface lure fishing for jacks at all? How many people have done that before? And how is your success? Uh, anyone catch any show of hands? Zero. Oh, zero, okay. <laughs> okay, well, it's always good to have someone honest in the crowd. Okay. <laughs> no, the, the, um, like with surface lures, it's pretty spectacular. It's like probably the best way to catch jacks because it's all visual, you know? Um, so you're watching, you're watching your lure, you're watching your lure, however way you may want to work it. And um, when it hits, it's, it's always a hit run back the other way, if that makes sense. They never chase it and grab it that way. I've never seen it done. Um, and they try and nail you wherever it may be. Um, but in a surface, there's two types of ways of doing it. One is with um, doing like a soft plastic and skipping it on the surface and getting the hit before you even actually even you start working, you know. Sometimes I hit it straight away. Um, and the other way is obviously with poppers and stick baits. Um, were you using these surface this uh, Yeah, so I just had a little popper tide on yesterday and um, just because it was quite warm and I knew the fish were pretty fired up, I went for that mm. more loud approach. Um, if they are a bit harder to get, I would always go like a stick bait or a little dog walker. Just a bit more of a subtle approach and kind of trigger that bite response a bit better. So if you had, uh, we've got about probably 15 or 20 surface lures here. Can I see what Stuart's pick would be? Uh, What's your pick, Stuart? I'd probably go... I've got mega bass I'll, lures. Yeah. I'll tell you what we've got. We've got mega I'll bass. I like good stuff. <laughs> so X wraps. Uh, we've got uh, M, M and D splash prawns, a large size, uh, sugar pens, and an array of other ones, so it's, uh, poppers and stuff. Yeah. If it was me, I'd probably go. I'd probably go M M D splash prawn in that larger size, like in that colour actually, with yeah. bars on it, and that would be like my popper style. So a bit more disturbance. I know it's not like a big loop from a normal popper, but that would be like that. Um, so the right on the surface yeah. slash subsurface. Have anyone ever used the MND splash prawns? Yeah, they're yeah, quite they're a good lure. Good. So, um, and the action's very good. They don't look like much, but they work well, so. They do, very effective. Yeah. Mm. And then I'd probably go for my dog walkers on my stick baits. Um, I like having two sizes. So I like a small profile, so they're 70 mil. The little Jackson, uh, what are they? I'll pass bait. these around so we can actually understand yeah. what we're talking about, guys. Is that right? So the Jacksons come with really good hooks on them. I've never had one straighten, touch wood. Um, and they're really good paint job and they're really tough. Really good um, lure for everything. You get a little bit of bycatch like Trevally and 
brim and stuff like that as well, but generally the Jackson stuff's pretty good quality. And then for my other one, I always have a Dog X Tide on, a Mega Bass. Now I know it's an expensive lure, but they just swim really good and um, you lose a couple of year type of thing. You don't lose a great deal, but generally you can steer them out. And I kind of use a lot more surface over rocky sections. So I don't kind of, I don't fish too much surface around pontoons and things like that. I always work that rock bar, like in the canals with a steep um, revetment wall, and there's rocks at the base, I'd use my surface on that, like around more rocky area. Sorry? All oh, right. We're having technical difficulties. <laughs> but, anyway, but um, yeah, so I always use the, use the surface around that like rubbly, rocky bottom more than pontoons and jetties and things like that. Yeah, yeah so. Um, jetties aren't bad, the ones with sticks on them, but yeah. yeah pontoons more of a subsurface bite, I find. Yeah, so in, in the surface lures, a lot of people say to use a little one or a big one, depends on you know, what you feel comfortable with, but it's a matter of about your casting distance. Um, obviously, it's a matter about um, whether you're using a bait cast or a spin reel. Obviously, bait casters don't cast little lures as good as spin reels, so please remember that as well, in all, all your fishing that is. Um, so you'll actually get them on, on a little surface fizzer like this fellow here, which is only very small, it's about 70 mil. Um, and very small profile, but it has props either end, which really just is like across the surface uh, without even doing any twitching, it's just a slow wind across the top. Um, there's a rash, is it's really good actually, but on that, trying to cast out of the bait cast, I think it's only around about, um, oh, it is 10 grams, sorry. Um, anything around about sort of 10 grams above on a bait cast is beautiful because you can control it without doing a crazy cast trying to get the distance. Anyway, the hooks on that, does that yeah. stand up to? They'll stand up to about 20 pound braid, but anything over that, no. You'll need to upgrade. So, okay, tw okay, 20 pound, 20 pound line. If every drag you can fish on 20 pound line. Yeah. Right. Um, most of the lures these days are pretty good, mate. Yeah. Anything. Uh, the American lures, um, I find their hooks are terrible. So change your hooks. Yeah. The, yeah. The different. Um, the Japanese ones tend to use good hooks. Unless they're chasing like trout or something like that. Um, but some of our, the big trout lures look like, like a jack lure, but they're using like very fine hooks on them. So you need to change them. But um, normally we'll tell you, if you, you say to us we're chasing jacks, then we'll say you need to change your hooks, you know, or even flatty ones or whatever it might be. Um, but, but generally speaking, I'd say 80% of me would need to change. Yeah. Not, not on 20 pound braid, 30 pound, different story. Yeah. yeah right. 40 pound, even 50 pound, even, it definitely change everything. <laughs> They're just so not made for it. Line, your line size that governs what yeah, because that's right. Because you, you know, that's exactly right. Because right. you, you fish your drag okay. to your line, mate, and then something's got to give. Whether it be the fish's mouth, the yeah. hook pulls out, or the drag slips, or the hooks bend, or the rings pop, yeah. or your knots coming down. Yeah. <laughs> it's endless. Not, not that I not that I experience much of that, but it's true, mate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so. Most of the hooks these days are pretty good. They're pretty good. Especially the Japanese laws. Uh, and like Rapalas are pretty good. Most <coughs> brands actually are, are fairly good, I think. They are. Yeah. yeah. So getting back to the surface lures. So, okay, so we looked at, um, stu actually, some size. I was just showing you size before. So that little one, right, is obviously good for spin gear, for your um, bait caster and, and spin gear as well. Um, you can up the ante and go something big like that, because that's, appropriately designed for, for a heavier like 30 pound braid or whatever you want, like a barrel rod or whatever. Which, 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 which brand? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's right. So years ago it was always um, mustard or owner, that was pretty well all you were looking for. Um, these days, um, there's a lot of good brands. Um, BKK are very good. Uh, Shinto is very good because they've made pretty well the same area. Um, obviously owner is still very good. And you have different different grades of hooks. You have like a three strong, four strong, six strong. Six is about the most, or seven for GTs and that is about as high as you'll go. But for Barra, uh, sorry, for Jacks and Barra, the same, same. Um, the, the size is generally around about a three X. You could go to four X if you want to, but you don't need to. Okay, because they'll suit 20 pound or 30 pound line. And when you buy the hooks, um, you'll see that little, like they'll be called a ST46 in say an owner which means four strong. 
SD66 is six strong. Okay? That's how it works. But if you're using like, a, even though hooks are very sharp, if you're using like a six size hook and 15 pound braid, it's a lot harder to set that hook to drive that hook in. Even like if you hook yourself up in the bloody hand, it goes straight in, I don't know how it works, but on a fish, it doesn't go straight in. <laughs> so um, it's a lot easier to set a three or a four strong hook into a fish's mouth than a six on light line. Heavy line, you just go, it's gonna go in, because yeah. you got hits of power. So uh, it's all relative and getting, and guys that know what they're really doing, they really tune into everything. The hook size matches the line, the leader, da da da. It's all, all, all science and, and perfect perfection. Um, sorry, man. I was just going to say, how would you tie off and then give it a little split ring? Just yeah, so um, if lures have an eyelet with a split ring on it, you can tie a uni knot straight to that split ring. But if you're tying directly to just an eyelet on a lure with no split ring, um, my suggestion would be to use a, a, a loop knot, like a perfection loop. I, I do, I don't make use to it. Yeah, I just, like all my surface stuff, I always loop knot it. Yeah, ditch the ring. No, I just tie straight to the ring, like leaf. Yeah. yeah, I've, yeah. A lot of guys say that the line slips between the ring. Yeah, Personally, it's never happened to me. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've had particularly it, with heavier line yeah. like I've had it ha happen on um, on jigs and stuff. But yeah, you, you're going hard and they're all over the joint and it may just slip up. But yeah, on uh, on straight swimming lures, it's very rare. Yeah, like a lot of this stuff, like even that surface stuff, it might be slack tight. It doesn't have enough for it to work into that ring and around. Yeah, it might go in like one little bit, but it won't unwind itself. Yeah, like I've had loops break just because of that slack tight, but um, that's it, yeah. Yeah, just about yeah. every lure here except, uh, oh, actually all the lures with bibs on it have a ring. Uh, most, most of the lures, surface doesn't. No, most of the surface doesn't, okay. Yeah. If that's any help to you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then colours. So colours, people say what's the right colour, you know. Um, I can tell you what the most popular colours are to work and that we sell. Um, and on surface lures, it's generally uh, like you know, surface diving, mid, everything. Jacks just seem to like white or red, simple as that. I don't know what that is. Gold's probably number three. And then natural colours come like fourth, fifth, sixth down the line. Um, but uh, it, I think it's what works for you on the day is just stick with it. But if you're buying lures for the first time and having a go, um, I definitely incorporate um, a gold one, a white one, particularly in plastics, and uh, and what something with red in it. Um, yeah, red or orange, like red something orange, yeah. bright. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. jacks are very territorial, so like half the time it's not that they're hungry and they don't want to feed. It's like I get them out of my area hit. So that that red or the orange is kind of mimicking another jack. So. And then you've got natural type stuff. I'll just throw these couple around so as well. Uh, you know, silhouettes another thing too. So if you've got a, um, a sunny day, um, anything that's white under is going to be hard to see for them to see it because of yeah. the sun. So a darker colour would probably work better. Yeah. And people don't understand that a lot of the fish, are like obviously jacks are down low looking up. They're one of the only fish, I still about today, they're one of the only fish I know that their eyes sort of like, you know, they go 360, you know. If you ever seen a jack up close, its eyes look everywhere. Yeah, they do. They look at you and they're always chomping, they're chomping trying to bite you. Yeah. Um, where most other fish, they just look, but the, the vision doesn't change much. Okay, so have yeah. you noticed they have a jack? in the net and you kind of get a lure out, they actually yeah. go you. Yeah, they, look, yeah. they see yeah. you, that's right. The, yeah. the yeah. eyes they eyeball you. Yeah. When you reach in, they'll yeah. actually try and yeah. bite yeah. you. Mm. Yeah. But that's oh. funny when you say about the territorial, because mm. last season I had a good season and we had two and three hunting together. Oh really? Mm. Yeah, like okay. Swimming, swimming all in the tank, all attacking. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. Probably four or five in the same boat yep. size. Mm. Yeah, right. And where was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're obviously very wise fish. I'd like to see them. No. Good discount no. tonight, Brian. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But yeah, it does throw away that. Yeah. When yeah. You, when you think that, because then you go to someone else and you go, oh, totally different. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And that's yeah. local. Yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. hunting like two brothers hunting as a team. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They probably yeah. are actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But um, getting back to surface lures, so with surface lures, um, if you're using poppers, obviously it's just a bit of a rake every now and then, just working like you do for Trevally or whatever else, with a, 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 a fizzer or splash prawns or, or some other type of lures that have um, very small, like a stick bait type thing. It's just be one, two, like that. They'll work like that, especially walk the dog style. Um, stick bait style, 
uh, or you can just, fierce, sorry, just straight winding. So fierce straight winding, uh, walk the dog, which are like pencil type ones, just keep raking it and that'll just, it'll alter itself. And poppers, you're blooping it and blooping it. Let it sit for a bit and blooping it, okay? Um, casting down along the side of pontoons, um, casting, like poppers work best around retaining walls, 100%. For those of you who have never done that, haven't shot at it, especially in the high tide. So the trouble is, you get like people in canals don't, a lot of people don't like you living, uh, throwing onto their fish and pets or the rest. Some people throw golf balls at you and some throw water at you and some people don't mind, they say hello, you know. It just depends on who you get on the day and there's certain houses you don't go to, but they're only good jack spots. I turn my just when you say that, though, yeah. it's um, what you need to remember when is there's probably been six boats in front of you that morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. true. Too. It's yeah. one of those things that yeah. where you've got to be first because. And don't be noisy. Three guys have yeah. done the damage, and yeah. another six guy comes along. By the time yeah. that six guy comes yeah. along. Yeah, don't, don't be noisy like the three guys in front of you. Yeah, and, and that's <laughs> what you've got to remember is yeah. you're not the first guy. No. You know, someone's already teed them off. Mm. Yeah. And you just happen to be... Mm. Exactly right. You're copping the punishment. Yeah, yeah. For, for the last uh, three that hit the jet ski. You know, yeah. Like it's or you <laughs> yeah. chip, chipped his boat with your big yeah. lure or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But um, it's just ethics, I guess. But um, uh, it's really, really good uh, fishing at the moment in the canals. And Runway Bay is like the probably the one of the best spots around. Benoa's really good as well. Parallels Point's not too bad. Parallels Point's a bit more sandy, so not as good as around um, St. Romo Bay, but it's mainly retaining walls and rocks. Um, talking in the, in sort of west side of the, um, the shops. Of the shopping centre, yeah. or, or west side of the Baby Street, so yeah. all through there's really good. Um, and that late afternoon bites are probably better than the morning bite. The morning bite's not too bad, but as you said, um, the, Brian, the people aren't as happy in the mornings as they are in the afternoon. So, <laughs> after they've had a few drinks and they're pretty happy to say it to those of you. It's just something you remember as why was that guy so angry? But it's probably the last two or three fishermen. Yeah. Not you. Yeah, yeah that's right. You yeah. just had to show up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think the biggest thing with surface is it's yeah. not an all day thing. So, you guys might go out and say, oh, it's high tide or whatever. The boys said that it's really good at high tide, but it's middle of the day. You've got to think, middle of the day, they're copping a lot of exposure. Um, the sun's really high, so everything can see them. They can see everything, but everything can see them, and they know that. And um, early morning, late afternoon, they're out patrolling, they're feeding, they're active. Um, whereas middle of the day, they're hiding under the pontoons, they're hiding under boats, they're hiding in the shade. So, like, I really like surface first thing of the morning, just because mm. it's nice and fresh. Definitely. If you're the first, as Brian said, like just on daybreak, you know that you're the first boat there, the fish are gonna be active and feed and you always see a bit of surface activity. Like how often do you see fish just randomly busting up in the middle of the day? Unless it's Taylor School, but they're a bit of an exception. But yeah, you gotta think about bite times and things like that as well. I'm just gonna show you the three different, like a lot of people don't understand how surface laws work, I just talked about before, different action. Um, if I pass one around, this is actually, we'll do it one of the times, it's atomic, um, it's a popper. So the popper is the one that you actually bloop it, okay, and it's going to throw a lot of water out, and you, let it, you can let it sit for a bit, and then pop it again, or you can work it a bit quite fast. Um, but they're just a straight action with lots of spray, okay. So that's the first one going around. So for, the, for the guys that don't know, and bear with me, the guys that do know. Um, the next one is a walk the dog style, which has normally got the head facing up, like a sammy or something like that type of, of lure as in this one here. So they sit in the water, head out like so. And when you, every time you, you pull it, it takes a different direction. The next time you pull it, you don't actually turn the rod that way. You just still keep going the same way, but it actually turns itself that way. The next time it goes that way, and that's how it works, okay? I always hold my rod to the side too. I don't Sorry. kind of tip up when I'm walking the dog. I don't know yeah. about you, Doug, no, but I always go to the angle. side. Yeah. 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 And then it's good if you hook something, you're already in the position to steer it out. Then the next one's like just a pencil, look like a stick bait. It has no, it just sits in the water flat and it will slightly walk the dog. Um, you can just slow wind and it'll just swim along like so. It has a lot of variation of different um, uh, type of action, but it has no uh, like surface um, spillage, does that make sense? So walk the dog still makes a little bit of a commotion. Uh, a pop obviously makes a lot of commotion. These don't make much, but for some reason the fish go on hard. 
And that's about as small as I'd use um, for jacks. The last one coming around, out of those three. Does that all make sense? Any questions on that at all, folks? Okay, well, anything else on surface laws? Um, not really. Like, as Dougie said, you can rig plastic so you can fish mm. them on surface as well. A lot of the plastics now are quite buoyant. So you just put like a weedless style hook in there or just a standard um, J hook. Um, yeah, I prefer trebles myself. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably change that myself. Yeah. 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 But the action may alter. So every lure designer makes the lure to work best with the hooks they've put on there. Once you start changing hooks, you get them to start changing the action. It may not be as good. Um, it may make the lure sink. We don't want it to sink and a lot of other things too. And that's also a problem if we put on heavy hooks on as well. Um, sometimes it'll make a perfect sitting, like surface type uh, lure, um, drop, and then it, it doesn't do the action. So, what do you do? Well, you either go down lighter line and, and be able to handle the hooks that you're using, or you um, try something else. Mm, <laughs> something yeah. you do, but you can't do much else. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, any questions on the surface? That's it, guys. Happy you that. You use that to advantage though too, which is the other. Mm. Or a bigger treble on the front, yep. and you just get that. Yep. And there are guys that do that, Brian. They actually, they put suspending dots on and stuff like that and change it to sink a little bit. Just Some guys like that actually. Yeah, that's right. Drive down this much. Yeah, that's right. Just enough to yep. entice. Which is the next little we're going to talk about, just the oh, subsurface. <laughs> um, so, subsurface lures, um, I really like subsurface lures, um, as long as there's a lot of commotion on the surface again. Yep. Um, sometimes jacks will come say uh, from, a, from a snag or from a, a solid pontoon up to grab them, but um, they just seem to be, and they're nearly visual, like you nearly see the fish hitting it. Uh, most of them only go down about a metre maximum. And that's looking at one here, I'm doing it. Um, and um, the action's extremely good. And they're very easy to use because it's just a twist switch and, and as you said, it'll pull back up a bit, it'll float back up to the surface. Sometimes on that reverse, pull back up and they float back up. Um, the fish will sometimes grab them at, at that point, um, but it's yeah, just quick twitch and then just do that and then quick twitch. Or you can just slow wind it. You can do a lot of different things with um, subsurface levels, but uh, the the design not to go more than about a metre. Some are suspending too, so when you pull them the first um, few turns, they'll go down about a metre or half a metre and that's where they'll stay. And then you can just twitch it at that point and play with it. Um, if you see one chasing it, it's pretty hard not to, you don't like, if it's a big jack especially, you get a bit, it puts the wind up you a bit. You don't know what to do. Do I go hard or do I, I don't want to stuff it, you know? Um, but just from the more you fish you catch, the more experience you understand, which is the best method at the time. It depends on what bait they're chasing, if they're active or if they're a bit lazy. It depends on the day too. Yeah. yeah. Like I think that's the biggest thing. This time of year when the water's not real hot, they're not really, really active. Um, so all of my subsurface stuff, like I just crank them, just a medium wind, um, no twitching at all. If I get a hit and I miss it, I might throw it in the next one and kind of twitch it real hard and try to get that. Come from down up north, I don't know, with the crocodiles, I don't know. But <laughs> oh right. Oh, he did. I do remember those days. I think maybe. Not something my brother pulled, by the way. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> um, but Mika's using this lure here, and this is what he got him on the other day. So it's a very, it's a subsurface lure, it's what we're talking about now. It's a Rapala. It's a fantastic colour for jacks. It's like burnt orange slash gold, red. Um, and um, he's just doing that same little twitch, twitch, pausing it, twitch, twitch, and slow winding it. And um, the hooks on this, you don't need to change. They're pretty good hooks on here for 20 pound braid. And um, yeah, it, it's, he got, um, I think it's around about a 50 centimetre jack and about a, an 80 barra up at, up at Benoa somewhere. But who's caught a barra here in the Gold Coast? Anyone here yet caught one? I've seen him go that, that, uh, 1.2. 1.2 is the man, it's a good fish. Mm. Was that in the <laughs> Coomera? <laughs> <laughs> okay, they get, they get caught around the Coomera, um, around um, even the odd ones up the back, but generally around where the rock bar is, which is just west of the boat ramp on the western side of the highway. It's all closed to fishing. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had me there, Brian. <laughs> um, so that's a good area, and around the bridge, obviously, as well. 
Um, they get them around the canals on the first canal estate on the um, on the east side of the highway bridge at, at Hoomer there. <laughs> good jacks, good jacks there too. Yeah, and then um, I've heard the odd ones in the Pimpama, in the Logan they get um, they get those and they get big uh, threadies in the Logan as well, so it's another bycatch of, of catching jacks, and uh, and definitely in the Narang. Um, in the Narang you get them around uh, probably the people are going to hate me on there, but sorry guys. But on the uh, the weir at Bubikin um, Creek, which is where you go into into Clearwater Waters, so around that area, um, around the two bridges prior to that, and even at the front and the Narang River there at, at the end of Campbell Street. They caught three. They caught three, did they? Yeah, nice. About 10 yeah, well, I had a, another customer of mine recently showed me a screenshot of his. Um, he's got the panorama, panoramic. Um, panoptics. Uh, panoptics, that's it, Humbird. And. Um, uh, there was like six barra, like I mean big ones, just sitting. There's only one of the, those bridges. They were just sitting on the side there. They were huge. And uh, but you couldn't get them to raise any. It was about a month ago. It was a bit cold, two months ago maybe. Um, so they obviously they're breeding. They've got to be breeding, I think. So a few small ones get caught as well. Um, but, yeah, so the chances are hopefully one of you guys this room will get one this season. The old queen, the old, um, the old quarry lake. Oh, yep. Up, yep. up near where the fresh comes in, there's yep. a little ford. Yeah. Just that's, the banks here. yeah. There's one mung going over one point two in there as well. Is that right? Oh yeah. So that's there I was saying right at the top there. So that's where um, the old Oxford Tavern uh, fishing club used to be at the top there. Mm. So in that big lake. Yeah. But there uh, yeah, I've, I've, I remember the, one of the ones I do remember back in the say the eighties was actually one caught off the foreshore um, where Brisbane Road here just comes hits the waterfront and uh, fish on the beach front there. Got okay. one about 900 back then, you know. So they're around, you just got to get, be lucky enough to get one. When you do get one, don't crap yourself. Be cool. Get it in, get a photo. <laughs> let, let it go. <laughs> that's probably also a consequence of uh, global warming. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it, that's it. I know, I think they're from fish tanks. <laughs> yeah, um, but I don't know. No. The ones from fish tanks are actually very squat because they can't grow any bigger. Um, but yeah, so getting back to the jack side of things, so that they're a bycatch. Um, we're going to go now, so, so subsurface will go down to deeper diving lures. And um, deeper diving lures is like probably the most exciting part of jack fishing because you can't see anything. It's, it's just a, a bang, it's a bang when they hit. Um, so you just got to be prepared all the time when you're winding and have you, if you've got an electric outboard, have your foot on the throttle. If you haven't, or your hand on the, it's hard to do, that's the trouble with remotes on, on your here. It's ridiculous when you get a fish on, you can't yeah. do anything except for stress, okay? So with a foot control in the old days when everything had foot control, it was like instamatic. You just, you got a fish on, you just went like that and without even knowing you're doing it and you're going backwards. Now it's like, just try and do it, hold the fish and change it, you know, and whatever else. Oh, that's not my little thing on. Oh, sorry guys, should we go yeah. down? I think, um, <laughs> how many of you guys have electrics, like on your boat? So. Not everyone has the creature comfort of an electric on the boat. It is harder to do. It's still easy. I used to jackfish out on a little three meter poly without an electric all the time. I just used to paddle around. I used to have the paddle next to me. Just used to fish a pontoon, paddle to the next one and do it. And I used to catch a couple doing that as well. It's harder pulling a fish out because it tows you around a lot more and you can't steer it out. But um, look, I've got an electric on our boat now. And the other day, I just really wanted to try that. Um, like it's a mink coder, it's got a north function, so you can just point the head in a direction, press north, and it'll keep you on that track. So there was a stretch along the pontoons, and it was just no boats on there, just pontoons. So I held it out about five metres from it, pressed it on three or whatever, which is probably about four knots, so pretty quick, and um, pressed north and just power fished all of those pontoons real quick. And that's when I got the hits and the fish. And it was the, the fact that you're focusing more on the fish in and less on the electric and steering and things like that. Um, and it made a big, big difference. It was a pain once you hooked the fish, then you've got to steer it out. But um, yeah, it was, it's very handy to have an electric, especially canal fishing, only because it's really tight. If you drift into someone's boat, they're going to scream at you and you just want to kind of keep the pace a bit. But um, electric, like I'd almost say it's needed when you're canal fishing. If you can fish the main river side of like the outside um, houses quite easy without it. You can drift a lot more, but um, in that tight corners, it's 
Yeah. It's a necessity. What do you reckon, Dougie? Um, yeah, it's, it helps. It helps. Um, but it probably starts at, even when you start fishing, like it's quiet, so you're not stealth mode the whole time. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. 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 So noise is a big thing as well. Like, canal fish are very um, exposed to noise, and it could be good, no good noise or bad noise. Like, if you've got a kid up the end of the canal that always starts casting it over everything, well, that's going to be a bad noise. So they're going to hear something, they're going to run to hide. Um, they're very well educated. So you just got to try to outsmart them a bit more. That's why that light, lighter leader, if you can, to a certain degree, um, that works a lot better. And just, yeah, stealthy with the electric and things like that. I turn my sounder off when I'm doing it, just because you don't have that ping in the water. Um, especially live baiting and stuff, bait fish, I'd always turn the sounder off. Um, it just, it's too noisy. It fucking makes noise. It does, yeah. Yeah, you can hear it outside the boat. Like, if you turn it on. Yeah. Just put your, yeah, it's like, like it's clicking, yeah. Yeah, it clicks, it's very, very loud, yeah. Yeah, even yeah. his snorkel under a boat, it's the best thing you hear, boom, 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 boom. It's like yeah. quite loud like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's very loud. So, yeah, you just want, and you can press pause and stuff like that if you want to leave your sound to run so you've got GPS or whatever. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And really, you're going to be up the front fishing with your eyes more than the sounder. So, yeah, just turn it off and be done with it. But yeah, the only thing that I really use it for canal fish is water temperature. Yeah. And if it's really warm, obviously I use the lures a bit quicker and things like that. But if it's a bit, bit cooler, I'll slow everything right down. Yeah, don't, don't use the sounder at all. No. Well, the guys that fish, this is what I can't understand. The guys that got those, those pan, pan yeah. ones. Like all the 360 they're stuff. They're extremely powerful. Yeah. So the noise must be, and only fishing mate, only eight or 10 foot deep. So the noise must be horrendous on the fish, but they sight fish, they see it and they cast them and catch them, you know, so yeah. does it scare the fish? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Some of them come up battered and grilled, but just because of the <laughs> rays in the water, cooks them. Nah, but um, yeah, it's not, it's one of those things, you've got to find the fish to catch the fish, but yeah, where's, where do you draw the line? Mm. Yeah, you've got to be somewhat educated. Like, if you've got two canals, just say you've got a canal and you've got wind blowing, like a wind tunnel right up the whole strait, there's going to be more fish at the end because you've got to think all the bait gets blown up to that back back end of it. So they're going to be a lot more exposed to bait. So they're going to be more in that feeding mood. Whereas um, if you've got a canal and it's like glassy flat, but the next one over has got heaps of wind, I'd be more fish in the wind one. It's harder, but it's better results. Yeah, And that's with anything. Like if you're fishing a dam for barry, you always fish a winded point, not a calm flat point or flatty fishing. We fish a wind blowing bank rather than the f smooth flat bank. So it's not comfortable, but it's definitely the smarter option. Yeah, fish definitely do move. So I just lost Jerry's talking about that. Yeah. We got some plastics, but um, yeah, so getting back to what we're talking about, which is um, diving lures. So diving lures, um, most people I have to understand when you're fishing um, structure, example, pontoons. So pontoons, out of all the fishing for jacks, pontoons is number one place they live, pontoons or those, um, what do they call those net ones? Yeah, the um, sea pens. Sea pens are yeah, really sea good. Sea pens are really good as well. They like sea pens. So they sit underneath there. Most of your pontoons are around about that deep under the water. Okay. So if you can find a land-based spot with a pontoon that you can cast to, do it. Okay. Yeah. They'll be sitting there uh, and cast along it. And oh, if you're in a boat, position yourself so um, if that's the pontoon there, okay, like that shape, and that's going up to the house here. Um, I position my boat around about this position here. Um, that's if the current's coming this way. I always cast it up into the current. Um, I'll cast as close as I can to that corner there. The pontoon, as I said, is around about a metre deep or 800 mil deep. So you need to get your lure down below that, generally speaking, to make it work. So we're using a plastic or a diving lure. It needs to get down about a metre and a half. And constantly try and keep it at that, at that depth and just slow wind it. Just keep winding it. And no, play in your pool or play in the clear water somewhere. So you know the speed to keep it at that same depth the whole time along down that side. Um, so yeah, it's cast it just past here. I'm sitting here in my boat. Um, I get it down to about the position that's in line with the bottom of the pontoon, just below it, and I pull it along this edge here. And generally, I get a hit in between here and about here most times. Sometimes you get hit at the start, but not generally. It's, it's right here. 
I think there's safety zones about here, and that's when I'll generally smack it real close to your boat sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's the position I like find the most productive, but you have to start up here always. There's no good throwing just to here, because sometimes you don't get the attention of the one that's up there. And some of these pontoons are 10 or 15 metres long, so, um, to, to, and some people do cast, 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 but I think it's, it's crazy. You get so many pontoons in so little time, you haven't got time to play on one pontoon with three or four casts. One cast, two maybe, if you know there's a fish there, um, that you caught previously, um, would be enough for that pontoon, then move to the next one, and the next one, next one, next one, and, uh, and do it. If you've got a bit of bait around that area and it looks pretty, pretty good, then I might do three casts. That would be the max. Okay, so don't waste too much time. Remember, the bite time is always only like about two hours, that's it, in, in any situation. So you don't have, you've got so big area, it's like so many lures and so much little time to use them. So many pontoons and so little time to, to hit them. So, um, and sorry for the guys that are land-based, we are getting it back to you guys soon, but we'll just focus on this at the moment. Um, but if you are land-based, same deal, cast up along the pontoons, on the edge of the pontoon or any jetties or anything like that. Um, if you're on a jetty, um, cast down to the end of it, past it and bring it back along as if you can. Um, like say, um, bigger, the, sorry, the shopping centre at um, Runaway Bay, extreme spot to, if you fish if you land base for jacks. And they guys get it on lures off, and they cast to the pontoon further down and bring it back up to, to the, you but if you... Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 it's a good spot though. It's a very good spot. Well done. Oh, in April, did you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Don't be really getting something there. Cool. No, very good. Yeah, but um, but in that same situation on any G, it's the same scenario. Yeah. So um, so get back to the lures. Sure, we're going to use. You'll pick out of those yeah, lures. So sure. I, Where are you going to go, mate? If it's we've got about 30, 30 yeah, This is our favourite type of fishing to do for jacks. Yeah, so. Um, I yeah. would fish like a Samaki Reddick. They've actually just released a bit smaller size, an eighty size. And I've used these before and they're really good. I like that gold colour. Uh, lots of flash, good contrast because it's got a black back. So when it's swimming, it's like it's flashing. And it's just something to um, really get them stirred up. So these particular lures are very similar to your jackal squirrels and your pointers. bass day and pointers. Yeah, and yeah bass sort of day, thing. sugar yeah. days, pointers, yeah. that type of thing. Same profile, same bib design, size type of thing. Um, the other one that I really like is the um, Jackson Jetster. Jester, yeah. uh, Jester, sorry. Mm. But um, they're kind of like the same same profile, a little bit smaller, still a really big bib. Um, and I actually really like the darker colour in the Jester. So the darker colour I use like in low light because it casts more of a silhouette. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Do you want to pass them around? Mm. Yeah. Um, Are they suspended? They... Uh, one is and one isn't, I the think. Jester suspends I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it's really does. It does, yeah. They both, yeah. Sorry. So they both suspend. Um, they've both got good hooks on them. The Red X come with BKK, so really strong hooks, really strong rings. Um, and if you want anything to either do whatever, you can change the hooks out so it floats or yeah, weight-wise. Or um, if you've got, same goes, if you've got a floating lure that's real buoyant, just use a bit of like lead wire. We, I think we've got some downstairs or mm. solder wire around the shank of the hook and that'll make it either slowly sink or suspend. So just play around. And if you are testing your lures, make sure you do it in salt water. Don't do it in fresh water because mm -hmm. everything's more buoyant in salt water because the water's more dense. Um, so a lot of the lures that say that they float or sink or whatever, they're done over in America, they've tested it in a lake and it's totally different here. So mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, yeah, like I was down in the pool and they go, oh, it sinks pretty good. And that's right in the salt and just hits it. Yeah, it just floats. It doesn't go yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and the other thing you can do is tune your lures. So I don't know how many of you guys know about tuning lures. Mm. Does everyone know how to yeah. do that? No, so uh, it's actually no, so if you lures, tune into swim. If you're, if you're winding it and, it's, yeah. and instead of going like the way it should be going, it goes off to the right all the time. Yeah. Has so everyone had that problem at you all? You bend the toe eye a bit and you can either get it to steer more to the right or more to the left. So, so turn it to the same, the same way it goes. Okay, same so trolling lures for mackerel and stuff yeah. like that. So, if it's going to the right, just get that little that little bit of wire and just turn it to the right a little bit, just to fly crap. Yeah, small. And I was going to say, and, uh, and then it'll come back straight again. Believe yeah. it. Yeah. Don't go. The don't try and turn it the opposite way. It doesn't work that way. It yeah, goes, it goes further. 
Yeah. yeah. I was going to sound weird, but I've got two boxes of lure. I've got three. I've got a normal box that just swims straight, and then I've got one that swims to the left and one that swims to the right. Seriously? And I always have it so it swims under a pontoon. I always have it. Love it. That's Serious. my secret. So the purpose on, on purpose. Hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I've got it labelled left and right. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it makes a difference if you can get them swimming slightly I reckon I know under. What he does left and right. Let me say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can get them slightly under, especially in that middle of the day bite where the fish are hiding in that shade area, you. Double your catch rate, you mm. really do. <laughs> they don't want to come out into that sun. They, they're in the shade for a reason. Mm. So you want to get, get your lure up and under there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's good. You but don't it, have to get it to swim much. Yeah. It's only a little yeah. bit. Like mm. a meter under that pontoon's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, most of these diving lures get down about what, around sort of eight to 12 yeah, feet? Yeah, eight to 12 feet. Yeah. yeah. And they double as a trolling lure as well. You can cast them, you can mm. troll them. But, um, the, the biggest I'd probably cut, oh, that's, that size going around now is like the size that everyone uses yeah. these days. Um, it's a sort of around that 75 to 90 millimetre. Um, we do, I don't use many big ones except for trolling. For trolling, I use the only big ones normally. Um, but casting, you could use something up to that size, but I'll pass that around, but it's a bit of an overkill. But for a troll lure, that's perfect. So bigger bib with a trolling lure, so you can uh, have a hit in the bottom closer to the boat so you've got less line out so the fish can't swim way back in the middle of no man's land under the pontoon around the next guy's um pontoon type of thing so you want to have it very direct and you always want to have contact with the bottom every now and then because they jacks do live in structure so you want to be down there you don't want it two foot below the surface in 10 foot because they're not they're never going to come up and grab it i'm just going to pass these three lures around when that one's gone yeah. these these are like Probably three go-to colours in, in any um, type of lure design, whether it be deep or shallow or whatever. Um, but for jacks, we sell mainly this is like a lot of red ones. So that's red and obviously uh, natural on top, but very dark underneath. Uh, white is extremely good, especially in, in plastics as well. And the next one would be probably gold with the red belly. Okay. So they're like the three biggest sellers in colours. Set a little bit of those if you like. Thanks, Terry. <coughs> Um, guys, there's a million different different type of um, casting, deep diving lures. Stuart sort of picked out his 14 yeah. favourite, I picked out my 14 that's favorite. It, yeah, that's what we've got so and, there, and a few of them cross paths, yeah. very similar, or the same one. I'm taking that one, I'm taking that one. Um, but um, at the end of the day, it's in that size, 75 to 90, uh, 2 to 4 metres deep, and you've got it covered. Okay? Yeah. And just a, a few popular colours. A lot of natural colours, uh, but most of us pick most of us pick gold yeah, of some type. Yeah, no. So just just, just wind. Yeah, just, I just, just slow wind. wind. Slow yeah. wind. Yeah. And like the heat of summer when they're really fired up, I do heaps of like twitches, real aggressive, like twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch. So it's kind of very erratic. Yeah. Because um, the fish are more fired up, so. You find most like most of those will back back, but um, they generally work best just a tight action. Where a shallow one, like those subsurface type ones, twitch, twitch, and they'll sort of, they just sit there and they'll sit there and just jerk, jerk. It's a different action where the deep divers, um, they work a bit better, a bit faster. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Steady one. Uh, and that's in all depths and all lures in, in deep divers too. Not so much uh, twitch, twitch type pause action yeah. too much yeah i think the other uh, thing is try to match a lure to the bait in the area like if you've got canals where all there is is mullet you try to throw that longer slender profile and then if you've got a like a bit more fast flowing water you're going to find more herring and things like that so use a mm. bit deeper that, profile like a um those two they're, like, they're both natural yeah ones. but like even like see that they're, they're the, still pretty skinny yeah these like are, i go wider like that yeah. like a bigger a deeper profile. A Doug profile. A Doug profile. Mm. They're a stew profile, this one's a Doug profile. <laughs> but um, yeah, so something a bit more wider, just you try to match the match the bait in the area a bit more. Mm. That's good, cool. Yeah. How do they go at night? Or, you know, yeah, so we're talking about it today. I was yeah. telling so my brother Paul and I used to fish a lot land-based, and for those that are land-based again, um, a really good spot is, I don't know what the people like in the neighbours on the edge of the, the bridges these days. <laughs> Um, but we did a lot of fishing on Little Monaco Street, uh, which is the one at Broadbridge goes from one from the highway across to Bundle Bridge. 
And the second bridge is like fantastic um, fishing there. You get down, park down the street a bit, walk down next to the road, down, down the rocks. And I don't know how many jacks we caught there at night time using mainly deep dives. But the Aussie surface laws at the time wasn't running too hard and was running hard, we used divers to keep up with the speed of the water flowing. Um, we'd catch, um, you know, in an average night, probably three or four jacks and a cod or two. Um, and you got a big brim, but yeah, and it was very good. And, and like, it's pitch black, mate. It's pitch, there's no lights yeah. on, the, on the bridge, it's black. And, um, but they obviously see it. And colour back then, we didn't really care about colour as long as the, the, the lure was the right lure, you know, yeah, yeah. the right action. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, but, uh, we always switch to surface lures when the when the tides slow down a bit because the trevallies start chopping around, whatever you know. You get trevallies as well on the surface lures. But um, we actually probably caught more, uh, probably 80% of our fish on divers, land based at night time, more than surface. You get trevally a lot more surface. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so you need to make sure the bait, like if you're going to land based nighttime or even boat, you need to make sure there's bait there. I probably wouldn't throw around canals at night because it's too hard to visually see where you're casting. Oh, I'd, I'd just be going yeah. on the pontoon at night. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, my canal's like yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I'd be casting your mate's pontoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely, and across, if you can reach it. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, any questions on casting deep dives at all, guys? No, you guys are all very quiet. Okay. <laughs> Um, trolling, who's trolled for jacks? No, you have, mate? Yeah, mate, I've done trolled a lot. Trolled but not caught. A couple of the, yeah, trolled yeah. but not caught, okay. I've caught, caught lots and lots and lots of trolled, probably more than maybe otherwise. Um, but trolling was very popular for jacks, say, 15, 20 years ago. And, um, and there are some great spots around here to troll as well, or troll as well. Um, those spots, um, Paralyse Point's probably my favourite spot. So we come out of the boat harbour at Paralyse Point. Um, if the tide, I like run out tide, so I'd burn up to, um, is it Jabiru, I think it is? Yeah. And fish along the edge of that rock wall. You go across the opening, it goes across, it's got the rock wall block off. So on that corner, Just Magic used to be back in the old days, a, a charter boat, but on that corner, all the way along the rock wall, all the way down to the to where the boat ramp is at the boat harbour, go past that entrance and go all the way along to, I think it's, I'm not, what's the name of that? It's, um... <laughs> Where the new marinas, you can't go any further because you're yeah. in the marina. But that whole so you got, you got waters. Like, glacial waters there. Yep. So you got about a two k run along there, and that tide again. If you get low tide about six in the afternoon, get down about four thirty and troll the last sort of hour and a half. Um, I have caught them the run in, and I prefer the run in the morning too for some reason. Yeah. Um, particularly that corner um, opposite Jabiru on this on the east side on the other corner where the rock wall is uh, on the house. Um, there are really big jacks there. I remember one time I was there and there's about two or three customers trawling as well at the same time. And um, I think we lost about 12 lures between all of us. And it was so quick. So when you're trawling, as I said, like before with the pontoon scenario, they swim with you. When they see something, they can nail you or nail that they think it's a fish. They'll, they just slam you straight into a rock or into whatever it might be. And obviously try and this must be how they work. They feed by damaging their prey pinning it and hitting it hard against the rock, whatever, and then they eat it. Um, yeah, and, it's, and you always lose your lure, it's just the way it is, it's like, and I always use it hold in my hand, you have to, because you have not time to get a rod holder when you're jack fishing, you must hold it in your hand. So, and twitching it and twitching it, and then just be whack like that, and you either go gun the motor if you've got a little outboard, try and get him out into the middle of the river, or it's already gone, he's already got your lure and it's all over. And that's even a 20, 30 pound leader, it doesn't matter. So um, that's just the way it is, but it's great fun. It's good fun. It is. Yeah. So trolling those little ones that are getting around, you could use those, those little 70 to 90 mil ones. But I like that bit bigger profile. Um, the shiners are really good too. Yeah, the shiners are good. shiners, yeah. really big bib for their size. I found one of these, I believe you saw these on the wall. <laughs> these used to be a hot favourite back in the day, and they're built with tough owner hooks, six, six weight. <laughs> Um, I won't throw it to you because it's sharp. Please be careful the hooks when it goes around. But that one there used to smash the jacks. It gets down around about 15 feet, 20 feet. So when you're trolling on, say, that, that wall there, for example, you're trolling about, um, when you go past the, the jetties, you're, like your rods they touch in their boats or the jetties, okay? But you're in about 15 or 20 foot of water. It's quite deep along that edge. And your, your lures, sorry, mate? 
Yeah, that's a good barrel lure too, that's right. And most jack lures catch barrel, that's why you catch barrel as a bycatch around here as well. Um, and you get a lot of cod, a lot of cod too, and a lot of trevally. Um, but yeah, so you're trolling really close and you're just working it and, and working it, but you're trolling it, because the tide there runs at about four knots or three knots, you're quite fast. Um, and if you're going with the current, um, your lure is sort of not really working to get up to about five knots. <coughs> going really fast. So the action's extremely quick. It's, when the fish hits, it's extremely quick. Okay. Always trolling with the... With Always, yeah. Yep. Never against it? Never against it. No, it doesn't work. It's good and the lure doesn't get down right. It's too hard. Yep. Sorry, mate. And I find when I'm trolling, the lure always comes back up. Okay, if your lure's coming right back up, um, it's because you're going fast, and, but um, maybe the lure's like got a small bib on it, or maybe it's... Um, there, there is deeper diving... Yeah, okay. And right. What, what the boat's in here and that's it. Yeah, okay. Have you got it too boat. close to the boat, maybe, mate? How far back you got it? Like 20 oh, metres yeah. back? Or 10 metres, yeah, 15? Yeah, you know, like, often I'll have it a fair way back. And yeah. And it's still, cool. is it circling before it comes up? It's circling and it's not swimming, no, right? No, no. Just, it'll be down there working fine. And then yeah. The thing, okay. Two, two reasons that happens. One is, um, it's got like a, a leaf or a bit of seaweed on it and it's just flicked it up yeah. and it may fall off before you get it in so you think, oh, why would I do that? But it's actually yeah. really fallen off. That's generally the most common case. Mm -hmm. um, secondly would be it just needs tuning. It's like it's flicked itself up. So it's to do with so what... Move that wire. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's a little bit. Yeah. You could pair of pliers, hold it straight on. The loop's like that way. Yeah. Hold it the same way as the loop. Don't try and do it sideways like that and squash it. It doesn't work that way and just tilt it just a little bit to the right if it's doing, if it's coming out that way, if yeah. it's coming out that way to the left. Okay. Yep. Yep. So there you go. Um, but yeah, so that's trolling, but there's an array of lures, a whole heap of lures that would, uh, would work for trolling. Okay, any questions on that at all? Question, uh, places, sorry, um, Paralysis are really good. Uh, Bundle's really good. We used to troll a lot around uh, the council chambers. It's a really good spot. And all around the um, western side of Chevron Island. Um, around Little Talabudger Creek, which goes down the casino. It's a real good area as well. The whole sort of area is all good. Um, a lot of cod when you're trawling. Okay, um, we'll go to soft plastics. So any questions on hard body lures? That's all, everyone's happy with that? Yep. Okay, um, just having people here fish creeks more than, than structure, like in, in that man-made? Most of are doing in more creeks? Okay, okay, if you fish a lot of creeks, um, uh, just a little scenario here, uh, just to give you some idea how, sorry, Stu, where to cast. Um, if you are fishing, say, a creek that's maybe that's maybe 20 metres wide, guys, so, and you've got a bridge here, and these are all like mangroves with bits of tree stumps in, in the water, so to speak, and the rest is above the bank. There's a bit there and on the bends. Um, you most of your holes on your... Um, on your bends are going to be on that side of the bank. So the current, when it goes out, it hits there and digs that out before it turns back that way. And when it comes in, it goes that way and it hits that there and digs that out before it goes that way. Does that make sense? So that's how they sort of work on every bend and reverse. It was that bend that way, it'd be, this, it'd be on that side, not that side. Yeah, it's always the outside. Outside, outside edge, bends yeah. always deeper. Yeah. So, um, and these are all overhanging trees and that's a rock bar. Okay. So there's a hole on this left side on this right side here. So if I was uh, land-based, um, I'd be probably standing here, and say the tide's pushing in that way, I'd be standing here, I'd be casting up over the rock bar and bringing it across the rock bar, and I'd be definitely trying to reach across under all these trees under here, and hoping I don't get nailed on that rock when I'm coming back in. So I may fall here from under here to there, then hit you here on this rock. Um, but that's the sort of scenario you gotta look for when you're, when you're in a creek. Um, this one here is like a big log laying in the water. Um, if it's running in tide uh, uh, this way, um, you need to be up currents of reverse because the fish are sitting into the current, right? So if you want to, it depends on if you've got electric outboard or not, but if you've got electric outboard, um, you could anchor up maybe here, I know that's say 20 metres away, and work this whole area here and cast up in front of the log because I'll be sitting in front of it here and pulling it back and working here, working here, working here, working across here. Um, but if the current's going this way, they're going to be sitting on that side of the log. You could cast over the log but, and try and get it, but they'll be facing in the current that way. So um, and they do move around the structure, but 
They'll generally sit in the current chasing the bait. They usually sit what, in front of the structure, not behind it. That's right, they always sit in front, yeah. in the current, that's right. So um, that's what I'm saying there. So if the current's going that way, they're, they're facing that way. Uh, so just try and think where they'll be, and, and that's really important. But as I said earlier on the first thing tonight, you need to practice your casting. You need to be able to cast up in the edge of that little log there, right at the corner, and hope you don't get caught up. Because otherwise you've got to go in. There's nothing worse than you make casting, you're about to do that perfect casting, you guys are hooked up like a bank. And you've got to, this happens to true me all the time, and you've got to go in with the boat and disturb the fish and unhook his lure off. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to that one, but anyway. That's yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. Normally I'll say, Stewie, hang on for the yeah. three casts. Yeah. Give me three casts. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like, if you've got a good spot and your mate snags, yeah. like, if he's half decent, he'll always say, have a couple casts before you go in. Because once you go in, it's yeah. done. That's it. Yeah, very rarely do you get fish. Cut him off, yeah. yeah. So cut him off, go and collect it yourself at low tide. Yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> um, and this is a bridge up here. So, again, this bridge pile on. So, if the current's coming this way, they'll all be on this side of the bridge facing the current around the pylons. There won't be much on this side over here. They may be, uh, but not be more on this side. And if it's going that way, they'll be on that side of the bridge. Um, bait fish. Yeah, so bait fish will be sitting on the same side as well, same. generally speaking. Yeah. yeah. So if you, like, like I live on the current Renault Bay, and every time I go underneath the bridge, it's exactly that scenario. If it's run out tide, they're always on the shopping centre side of Baby Street Bridge. Chipping away, you know, jumping in the water. Other sides, there's nothing. <laughs> so the end of the current. So in the, in the fish Were you meaning more what if you bait fish in? No, like no, where no, you'd no, go? No, or what no, bait? Where, where live yeah. bait fish, live yeah, bait okay. fish, yeah. 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 No, so basically, everyone's going to sit in front of structure. Always. Into the current. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's mango jacks or coral trout or whatever yeah. you're fishing. So all the same. Well, not, yeah. yeah, well, that's the way you normally think, and they'd be in the calm side where it's not a hard swimming or whatever, okay. hiding behind a structure. but. That's not the case because it's uh, they need to be feeding. Yeah, and you get that bit of a pressure point at like a start of a snag or structure. Mm. It's probably not that hard for them to. You never see them like fin in real hard to keep up with it. So it must just be. I don't know. Yeah, they just seem to sit there. They right? kind of just sit without there. moving, probably but the current's ripping. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Against the structure. yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess they utilise flow or something. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so and when if I'm trolling, if I'm trolling, trolling, trolling. <laughs> Um, in this scenario here, so I'd be coming down here and I'd turn at about here and hopefully my lure cuts across through the front of that, that structure there, right? And the rock bars, uh, if anyone's here, bar anyone barra fish on rock bars at all, trolling at all? No one's done that yet, you will one day. But um, yeah, just go stroke where they'll be sitting in the current, if the current's going that way, they'll be sitting in the front of the rock bar here. Um, if you can get over the top without hitting your prop on the bottom, which I always do, um, just get, go straight over the top whole thing. Just go over the top. Because they'll, be, they'll, they'll whack it. As soon as you get, your boat gets about here, your lure's about here, uh, it'll get hit normally. Um, this case scenario here, um, I'd probably attack it if I was trawling a lure. I'd probably come down as far as I can to here before cutting across to here and trying to get my lure, if it gets to about here, it'll pull across like that, through there. And dismiss that log. It's all about um, you got to steer your boat. You got to really steer your boat. And the guy that's um, obviously the boat driver makes sure his lures on the right side. Yeah, <laughs> the bad guy. We're always arguing about this too. Which side of the boat do you sit on? Yeah. Because uh, it is it is definitely true that if you're on the bank side, you get more fish. Hundred percent. That's what I found finding in. It's not the fishman. Ah, okay, so any questions on that at all? So creek fishing is really good. Some really good spots, guys, if you, um, if you have a, a little boat um, from here, like Crumbin Creek is really good, Tell is really good. Has anyone fished down that way at all? Oh, I live down that Do you, mate? You're beautiful up there. Down, yeah. yeah, west side of the highway is fantastic. Yeah, I'm yeah. sort of, I live between the two. So uh, Eleanora. I'm both. I'm a Tell Oh, Tell mate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so anywhere, anywhere along there, yeah, between the two bridges is fine yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good country. So, but get at the back blocks is even, even nice up yeah, yeah, yeah. that way. But um, otherwise, uh, Narang River, I really haven't caught Jacks more further than about where the power lines are, where the railway crossing is there. That's about as far up as I get them. There's a big rock wall between the power lines and the, 
and the railway line, that rock cliffy there with the house on top of it. That's a really good area called the jacks there. It used to be a pontoon down the bottom there. We used to troll past the time and cast it. And a really good jack fishing there as well. Okay. Um, other than that. Saltwater Creek's really good. Yeah, Saltwater Creek's yeah, the back. A lot creek of natural well. structure in yeah. there, lots of tree lay downs and stuff so like that. A lot of guys land based uh, Saltwater Creek as well, um, where you can Where's find that? it. Saltwater Creek, which is. It's uh, like off the Coma Bar. It's like yeah. at the start of Coma Bar Creek. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it runs off Mine Hope Line. Yeah. Between Cooma River and, and um, Cooma yeah. Bar. Yeah, one end yeah. comes out at Cooma Bar, the other one comes out at like up near the um, cane fields up the Cooma. Yeah, cuts through that back the, way. I, I have to say though, um, from my experience, I don't know about your history, but um, I generally find in the creeks, the more smaller creeks, you rarely get a like, consistency of big ones. You might get the odd big one. Yeah. You get the little ones, okay? Small like average. 30 to smaller. 42 or whatever. Um, but in the canals you get you get done so many times by monsters. It seems to be more consistent big ones. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the residents are just obviously they are, they just keep growing and growing and growing and everyone feeds them chicken or whatever <laughs> and they just grow and grow. Um, but it's definitely uh, more active in the canals for bigger fish. But it's more nice up the up the creeks. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> the more beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any questions? We'll get back to the soft plastics now. So it's good we want to go to bait soon. Yes, you find like when it's the middle of the tide, it's really running, that there's going to be too much flow? Yeah, it can be too much flow and yeah. it's just a hard time to catch anything. Yeah. And again, same scenario, whether it be that or whether you're chasing dewies and seaway or chasing flatties, it's a really hard time. Especially run out tide's not too bad, run in tide's very hard. Yeah. Oh, whiting's the only thing that we catch in the middle of the tide on run in tide. Yeah. Yeah, but everything else is very hard to catch. I yeah. don't know why that is, but just the way it is yeah. in life. Do you find them with the moons, like obviously the full moons and the new moons, the yeah. bigger runs, you get, harder? Yeah, yeah those is, spring tides, yeah. like at the moment, they're massive. Mm. And like mm. I fished the other day for flatties and we got heaps of good fish at the start of the tide. And after about the first hour and a half, two hours of incoming, when it was really racing, it was so hard to get a bite. Yeah. yeah. Until it slowed down again and then they came back on. Yeah, so probably. You get more fish still then than you would say when, like, the middle of the moons when you get more smaller. Um, yeah, yeah. I, thought, I like night time, I don't mind a big tide, um, especially on surface stuff up, up the rivers a bit, um, for Trevally and stuff like that. Um, for daytime, um, yeah, probably I just like to get that tide, that first, um, like, that last late, late low tide or first run in tide. Um, jacks are different to most other species. They tend to like that last the run out tide, um, where a lot of other species it's two hours after high tide, which is the bite time. The jacks necessarily don't play the game on that tide for some reason. Yeah, yeah. They're one of the only fish that don't really play the tide that game <laughs> yeah. for I some think, reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I think in terms of number of fish, say if you're going to catch twenty fish for a day of anything. Over that small tide period, you'll catch the 20 fish like over that period of time. Mm. Whereas when the tides are really big, I think you catch that 20 real quick. That's quick. Like it's That's very yeah. good fishing for yeah. a small window. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, the bottom of the tide and the first run into a very good time for jacks. Sorry, mate. The flow of the tide is like slack. Is that not um, good? It's good on the bottom, yeah. but not so much the running. But there will be a, a period for maybe, um, like, especially on the bottom of the tide, for maybe 20 minutes where they, everything shuts down. Yeah. And as soon as it starts treacling, they'll just come back on the chew again. Yeah. yeah. And you notice that with like bait flicking on the top and stuff like that, mm. there's always a stage where it's just like heaps and then none. I think because the tides, when it's, um, when it's dead, it's easy for fish to catch fish. So it'll hide. Yeah. Everything hides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe the Jacks are hiding from the sharks and the, and the little fish are hiding from the jacks, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there's got to be a reason for yeah. it. Okay, soft plastics. The soft plastics are great fun and, and probably even maybe more productive than all the lures we just talked about. Okay, um, and they're cheaper, of course, by far. Um, and there's a few different ways of fishing soft plastics and a few different styles of soft plastics. Um, so, um, shrimps, uh, prawns are really, really popular. And um, the beauty of a prawn is um, you can fish it really, really light. You don't fish like a flathead when we get a, quite a big weight on it. You fish it very light. So um, I'd be using like a, 
this sort of size jig here, which is like a, I did have one here somewhere. Yeah, one eighth. On. One eighth, yeah, yep. one eighth and a 4.0 or 5.0. This is a 4.0. Um, I'll just pass this around a sec. Yeah, 4.0 and like a lure this size is probably just enough type of thing. Yeah, 5.0 would probably 5 be better. 5.0 would be ideal. I have not five O's this way. Doug's prawn's going to swim around corners by the look of it. <laughs> it's all right, it's swimming under the pontoon. Yeah. No. It's like its eyes, it's off centre. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Put so, that in the left box. Yeah, I should have yeah. got the five O. That's a four. I've got five O's somewhere, but they're bigger, heavier yeah. head. But um, the beauty of this is you can cast it to any structure, whether it be a tree or whether it be a pontoon, and just let it slowly sink down. And as soon as you flick it, it, it'll just flick, you know, like a prawn. And I have to say for the next six months, like a, during the season, um, prawns are like a really go-to, whether it be whatever yeah. sort of fishing you're doing at the moment, but they just, um, they start coming on, the little jelly prawns are everywhere at the moment, they get bigger, 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 and uh, it all starts to happen. Uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah, anything to say about this too? Uh, well, they do come rigged with like a standard weedless hook, mm. or a snagless hook, um, the, worm hook. Um, if you are fishing the natural structure, like down around Talabudra and stuff like that, I'd fish it out of the packet. So you can get right up in those mangroves and stuff like that. With a jig head, you're just going to get too many snags. It's going to be more grief than it's worth. But, but, um, but around a pontoon and stuff like yeah, that. Although, pontoons and stuff like that, I'd go jig head. A lot of pontoons uh, have got the, the furry stuff on them. If you know what the fender, furry fender. And uh, I think... Hooks really hooks don't like sticking it. out. Oh, they get, they yeah. love it. Oh, the fenders love it. Yeah, the fenders love it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, where a weedless one, you can throw it onto the fender and pull it across it yeah. and drop it in the water. You know. Yeah. So it depends how good your casting is. Yeah. And um, you can skip them really yeah. good, like rigged weedless yeah. as well, up so over that low line. And stuff. This, this type of one here is is like it's just going to smack the jacks. Um, so it's just got a little bit of weight just to keep the head down. Um, the tail's going to do a lot of flopping, and to slow wind or a bit of a bit of speed to it maybe. Um, across just subsurface and uh, yeah, they'll work really well. And around uh, structure and pontoons and cast it right into those trees if you're fishing um, natural structure. And then the most popular thing we sell by far is like that type of setup there, which is like a, uh, a four inch um, paddle tail, whether it be that or um, diesel minnows in the X-Man are really popular. Um, in the yeah, Z-Man, sorry. Um, we sell lots of um, the boom baits, which is that white one going around, and this, and this one here is a boom bait as well. They're the same, like, you know, stretchy material. And um, the half ounce is really good because uh, you can cast it out. You, as I was saying before, on, that, on the, the jetty scenario, you cast it up side of the jetty, you let it sink down, it's going to stay that perfect, um, you know, one metre depth and just steady wind it all the way back. And that's all you do. There's no action. It's just steady wind. It's not like a flatter where you're dumping, dumping it. You're just bringing it back. The pedal tail's going like that. And it just gets towards the end of the jetty. And it's like, you know it's going to happen. And that's what happens. And, uh, and that's hooks are not a bad size in that one there, actually. But it needs to be about three eighths to half ounce. I know it sounds big uh, for around quite structure, uh, quite waters. But that's what you need to keep it at that depth all the way along the pontoon. Do you along find the length with any of the I see guys are like two and three metre lengths, you don't need nothing, you only need like 60 centimetres, yeah. not even, it's just a bite trace, you know, like really a bite trace or a tail doesn't hit it and swipe, break your line. Um, yeah, when a water's really crystal clear, do you go longer than like longer on the furrow though? I don't, not, not normally, um, I, I don't know if they look that far up the line, I, I think they're concentrating more on the lure, the action of the lure getting that Swimming right is more important, I think, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. I go a little bit longer, but... You do fish yeah. a long one. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, gen I always make sure that the knot's outside the rod tip when I cast, yeah. but I always pendulum cast everything. Yeah. So I don't have the lure, like, four or five inches off the tip. I always have a big, long, long hanger and, yeah, get it out there that way. Yeah. Yeah, th this little one here, um, we've got a, quite a few customers that are really good jack fishermen, including Johnny like, loves these ones. Um, I know um, he used to do a lot of jack fishing. He's done talkers before. Um, uh, the old oh, mate that does the carpentry, Jason. Um, um, Heller. Heller. Jason yeah. Heller, that's his favourite skip, skip one as well. Yeah. Um, and Rue, the Japanese dude, you've always said Rue in the canals, he, he likes these as well. 
I'll pass that around. They're really good, so you can rig that up again with uh, like a 1 8 jig head um, and get it right in and skip along the top next to the, the pontoons or next to trees or whatever it might be on the edge of a boat. Um, or you can run it weedless with about a 3 0, probably uh, 1 6 or 1 8 um, weighted uh, worm hook. It'll work really good. Uh, when you're using the worm hooks, guys, um, you can rig up like the one that's going around now, or you can just use a screw in type. The screw in type's really easy. So, most of them, a lot of them downstairs now come with screw in, and some come with the blade underneath the screw in too. I think blades on jacks hasn't really helped me at all, um, but we've never used them for many years. I just sort of fell in the air, must a bit. But um, you could try it. I, I, I think it's uh, less attractive to the, to the mango jack, um, but see how you go. They're good for barra that though, they're good for barra. Uh, but anyhow, so you, you just screw the plastic onto the screw. You don't actually put the, lo uh, the hook through the head like that one around. The Sorry, mate? They don't work on the Z-Man. No, because Z-Man have like got a hollow front. Yeah. They're a little bit different. Yeah. So yeah, they're very That's difficult. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, they're difficult. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, but generally plastics, so you just screw it on and then look where the hook's gonna go in length and then bend the, hook, the plastic around and just pop it in. That's how it sort of works. And make sure it's straight. And make sure it always comes out centre. It's like a bit of a uh, spring setup yeah, on the front. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different hook. Like yeah, it is a nice, slightly different yeah. shape. We got this downstairs. Front. I should bring one up yeah. today, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's how it sort of works. Yeah. But in saying that, like I've, not so much jacks, but other fish, when they're on the chew, like I've caught sometimes, uh, like flatties, for example, 15 flatties on one plastic. And I've pretty well put the hook like maybe six different positions and turn the whole plastic around so the tail's upside down, the tail's sideways, whatever. If they're on the bite, they'll just keep biting it. It's the action that you've got to get right more than worrying about it being perfect, you know what I mean? Perfect makes probably perfect again, but <laughs> but it's uh, understanding the, act, the action or whichever twitch it might be, whichever wind it might be, understanding when the, what the fish is going to hit is the most important action of all. Presentation comes probably last. I and think, having the right lure too, like you, 100%. you can be cast with your mates, which happens with us too, and, and my mate would be just smacking them, going, what the hell, you know? It's usually And I mate. can't get a bite. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it, that's true. Sometimes. Nah. I can't get a bite, and, uh, and then I'll switch to a lure, I look what he's using, how he's twitching it, and then I'll switch to that, and then wham, bam, we both get yeah. hooked up. It, not, not straight away, but in, in time. Um, because it's just what they're feeding on at the time, or what colour it might be, or what, what actually. What, what it might be, yeah. So don't just put the one lure on and keep casting it all day long. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Okay. I think the other big thing is casting oh. accuracy. If you can be accurate with your casting, especially jack fishing and things like that, you'll really start to smash them. And um, the other thing is, and it's a good thing, it's good to practice your casting if you can. Um, skip casting is a big thing, as Dougie mentioned before. It's anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's kind of when your lure hits the water and kind of rolls in. It's like when you're skimming stones, your lure kind of does the same thing. And it's quite good with um, a lot of pontoons that have the drums on them, not like a solid pontoon. You can skip cast a plastic way under that, um, under the actual deck of it and fish it back out. And that's accounted for a lot of fish. Over at mooring rope. Yeah. Mooring ropes are a pain. Yeah, mooring ropes are a pain. Mm. Yeah. You, um, you either catch a mooring rope or you catch fish and it does you around the mooring rope and that's it. Bit of a hate hate relationship with the mooring rope, but um, yeah, they hold a lot of fish and they're there because the bait's there, so you're in the area. Okay, I've got a fiver hook in this one, so it's a better size. <laughs> I found one. Um, but um, these are a new one out from Power Base. Have you ever used these at all yet? This room, mate, they are like killers. They're really good. I, like, I haven't had a chance to go hard in the jacks yet with it, but I will. Um, but for everything else at the moment that we've been using on, they're just uh, incredible and they're cheap. Um, and I reckon that cast next to the pontoon and just twitch, twitch, and just let it fall down and just twitch it. It's just, they are really, really good. Sorry, what was the name of the one? They're Berkeley a, Power, but actually I passed yeah, the packet around. Yeah, it's a power shrimp. They're power called, shrimp, yeah. yeah. There's only four in a packet. They're about, like about seven bucks, something your price, you know? Yeah. So the good thing about the power base too, they actually float. So they do get that bit better, oh, actually, more lifelike sink. And you can rig them weedless and too. fish them on the top. Yeah. So, which works quite good as well. For those of you who are flathead fishing, they are just like the big flaties are unbelievable. 
up in the flats when the guys are casting the big jointed lures. Good. <laughs> Is anyone fishing a flatty comp this weekend? There's a flatty comp on. Let's see. Uh, make it. Oh, what's Dash, Dash for cash? cash. Dash yeah. For cash yeah. 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 Okay, I don't mind telling me now. They're really good. Oh, sorry. Okay. I forgot about that. The thousand people there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be good. But yeah, any paddle tail, just burn it. Oh, I don't mm. fish too many paws. It's just constant, yeah. constant wine. Keep that action going. And um, yeah, yeah, hollow really. bellies are good too. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, they're good too. Yeah, these are good. These are actually another. I oh, they called them dragon lures, mm. but they're really good too. That type of thing there as well. Yeah. Um, so if you go for a fish in the morning, just scenario. Yep. It's a lovely morning, a little bit of breeze, whatever. But what are you going to start off with? Um, that's a good call. If there's a lot of bait on the surface, I'll, I'll definitely start with the surface lure. Yeah, I'll um, try surface first up, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. If I see bait or not, I'll fish surface. Yeah. Yeah. Until okay. that sun comes up. And as soon as the sun comes up, I'll switch definitely to, to plastic. So once be... that sun comes up, you want to go a bit deeper for darker anyway, you know, yeah. into that bit of darker yep. water. Yeah, they'll go in the shadows and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 That's right. You, you, you're higher in the water column in the darker time. Yep. And as a, yeah. yeah. Just as a start, it's a start. Yeah, I think yeah. they're roaming around early once. They, they know too when it gets a bit busy, there's obviously more boat traffic or whatever it might be, or people casting more things in the water. Um, yeah. th they'll just go into their little safe zones. Yeah. But before that, they're out prowling around. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And if you if you are on trawling lures, like I was saying earlier, we're forever looking for bait and trawling the bait a lot as well. I meant to say that earlier. We find this herring schooled up wherever it might be. Um, to concentrate on, on getting ready, that's where you're going to get your strike a lot of the time. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, any questions on lures at all, folks? Okay. We're going to go to bait. Okay, you all ready for this one? Good. Okay. <laughs> so. Hey, sorry, <laughs> Yeah, spin it's what you're comfortable with. Yeah. If I was using little lures, I'd definitely use spin because I can get a better, more accurate cast without concentrating, trying to get the distance. Yeah. Um, because little lures are hard to cast on, on most bay casters. Uh, light lures, I should say. Um, I think under 10 grams. Like seven grams is not too bad, but most of the bay casters these days do run pretty good on seven grams. Years ago, it had to be 10 or, or 14, you know. Um, but with a, a thread line, you can cast a a one eighth, which is only three grams, although the plastic probably weighs three grams, so you've got six. But um, you, you can just effortlessly get it into wherever you want to get it into. Um, yeah, but if you're using, you know, those bit bigger lures, uh, bait casters are definitely more accurate if you, if you know how to cast one right. Yeah, 100%. And you've got things like, you know, the new 13 reels, the uh, yeah. DC Shimano reels, and, and some of the uh, dial ones that are, are very good now and anti backlash. Yeah. So, wind's another problem. We've got a lot of wind days. So, uh, most windy days, I prefer not to take my mates out that use bait casters because they get a lot of tangles, especially casting into the wind. So, if that's the way you've got to cast and the wind's blowing that way, you can't think about it, but you have to cast into the wind. <laughs> and with the bait caster and light lures, it's extremely <laughs> scary. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you guys know what I mean if you, know, if you do that sort of scenario. So um, we're an egg beard, you just you flick it in there, you know, it's easy. So, um, and most times I have both in the boat anyhow, so yeah. it depends on the day. Yep. Yeah, I just use yep. spin for everything. But for, tra for trawling, I uh, definitely use bait casters as well. Yeah. I, I just find my hand the nicer and easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, for jacks, yeah. And they've got phenomenal drags. Oh, those, the thread lines yeah. have these days too, like that little band, it's got 12 kilos of drag, isn't it? Yeah. Something yeah. yeah. Beauty with a bait caster is if you need more drag, you just thumb it. Put your thumb straight on there, it's easy. It's very hard to do with a spin reel. You've got to hold the spool and then you can't wind it. Yeah. My thumbs look like my belly, so big flaps. <laughs> Slag of skin hanging down. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, okay, so any more questions on, on Lewis at all? Okay, bait fishing. Okay, so um, I, I really like bait fishing for jacks, um, whether it be live bait or dead baits, um, and I do a lot of it. Um, I did have a go the other night with Stuart, 
but we realised that the water was still too cold where we were we normally smack them really badly. Um, they weren't there. They were maybe there, but they just weren't biting. As simple as that. Yeah. Although the, the barometer was a thousand ten slash eleven. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, we're trying to look for an excuse we can when we're not catching fish. We do. <laughs> so yep. We've got a list of them. We bring it out. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had a couple of extras I didn't exactly know Exactly right, yeah. yeah. And, um, no, it was, it was really bad. The catfish are on there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they were on well. <laughs> and yep. the brim. Um, but, guys, um, generally speaking, the next two to three months through to February is really good bait, bait fishing uh, for jacks. And what I like bait fishing for jacks, uh, I like it for many reasons. And... One is um, you can do it at night time and you get real good results. So we don't get much time during the day because we're always working, as most people are. So you go at night time, you anchor up and put your face out and it's sometimes it's health or leather, everything's going off really good, you know. Um, but trouble is getting the bait. The bait's a problem unless you've got a cast set in a spot you know you can get the bait. Um, bait can include obviously little mullet, diver whiting are very good. They love little whiting, a diver whiting that is, can't use yellowfin. And, uh, and silver beauties are good too, okay? Um, I have even caught jacks on, on yabbies, I'm not intentionally fishing for jacks, but uh, generally speaking, you need flesh bait. If you can't get live bait, um, your alternatives are uh, mullet that you caught previously and put in the freezer. So mullet heads are really good. Um, I learned many years ago from a really good jack fisherman to any mullet that was about up to that big, um, he'd hand break the, the dead mullet, obviously, from the freezer. Uh, hand break him just behind the head near the dorsal and then he'd get his shoe and he'd squash it and then he'd just put like a 5 o hook through it and that was it and the, and the jacks loved it. Put a whole head on that looks nice and neat and they don't want to know about it. Maybe it spins in the car, I don't know what it does, but um, they love the squashed head so that, that works really well. Um, mullet fillets are really good. Um, I've caught them on tuna fillets over the years, um, whiting fillets, tailor fillets and all that sort of fillet type material. Um, but I have to say the best thing, and one of my mates here is going to hate me, but one of the best things by far is squid. Now, I didn't believe this, and I'll tell a story. Um, Matty, if you're watching, sorry, Matt. But uh, <laughs> my mate Matty, he's an ex-trout uh, fisherman, and pro tra uh, coral trout fisherman, and he's a, he's a grim reef. He's a really good fisher. Like, I mean, really good. And, uh, and I didn't know he was at this spot. We were up the Coombe River one night a few years ago, quite a few years ago. And I was with my boys, and it's like pitch black, and it's about 8 o'clock at night. And we'd spent two hours up to Anakas in mud, dragging net, and because we wouldn't give them the cast sense, we used the drag net. And we were getting like about three little bait fish every time we went around. And there's like crabs in the water, everything happening up, up the river. And, uh, and the tide was coming in, it was getting deeper, and this is stupid. So you know, we had about six or eight liveys. And, uh, we went to the, to the spot where I like go to, and there's another boat over in the distance over there, about 200 metres away, 100 metres away. And um, so we put the liveys out, as we always do, and uh, it was a bit quiet. We lost a couple of fish, and then um, we got one about 42 centimetres or something, a small one. And yeah, we hear these guys over this boat, we hear every 10 minutes, like clang, bang, and like yahoo, and then obviously having a few, few drinks. and. Um, and then um, after about two hours of hearing them yahooing all the time, this boat goes back past us to go to the boat ramp and um, he goes, there you go, mate. And I said, oh, I've got one jack, you know, not, not too bad. I oh, just one. And he goes, Doug. I said, Matt. <laughs> I really realised this, I was voice, right? And Matt goes, uh, he goes, Oh, I'll come a bit closer. So he comes a bit closer to me, right next to me, actually. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'll be fishing liveys for jacks. And I showed the jacks. We had it in live well. And uh, I sometimes I relocate them back to my area. <laughs> so, and, uh, or sometimes onto the stove. Anyhow, so um, um, he says, what are you using for bait? And I showed him the live bait in the tank. I said, on liveys, you know. What are you using live bait for? I said, well, that's why I normally jack fish, you know. And he goes, nah, he goes, get rid of that shit. He goes, this is what you use. And he had a box of squid, just a Californian squid, right? And uh, I'm going, no way. And he goes, oh, hang on, I think I've got some left. And he pulls out a few that he had in the bucket because the box was empty. Then gave him this about, about six or eight, I can't remember how many it was. And he goes, this is what you're after. And he lifts up his lid, 
like every jack's like 60 plus and lots of. There's a few of them though. though. <laughs> is, there a, is there a limit, boat limit on jacks? Uh, there wasn't, I don't know if there is now, but anyway. Yeah. And then back, that was quite a few years ago. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it wasn't actually a few years ago. Anyhow, um, but I just couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. And he's using squid. So anyhow, he goes, let me know how you go. So he putted off and we threw the, we quickly turned the squid as quick as far as we could. The live is <laughs> in the water like that, put the squid on. And we've got three jacks, and I was, I'm serious, straight up, we ran out of squid. I only had six squid or something. And they were all like 55, 60 centimetres. And I could not believe it. So for the next few years, including the other night, but the caddies that are a squid, but they're just not on yet. But um, they love squid. Yeah. So mate, try squid. They've got to be whole, and they've got to be the, like the Californian squid. Um, I've got some here in a packet somewhere. So I'll show you how to rig yeah. up a bait in a minute. But um, yeah, so they need to be... You want a bigger size, like yeah, you don't want like a little bottle, yeah, bottle they, squid or anything? Yeah, they need to be at least a three in a packet, at least that size, okay? Yeah. So for those of you who bait fish, give it a shot. I don't know if it works everywhere, but I've used it in about three or four different rivers now and spots. What and sort of rig are you talking about? Uh, just yeah. a two hook snail hook rig, yeah. 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 Um, which I'll... <laughs> and okay, it, if I'm You're fishing, <laughs> no, <laughs> I stop at certain area. <laughs> um, okay, so it's the same scenario. No matter if you're fishing here or up north or wherever it may be, you have to find like rock holes, rock bars, or structure. And that's where jacks hang around at night time, or somewhere where the bait may be hanging out. So whether it be a bridge, um, a pontoon with um, shopping trolleys hanging up the end of it. Yeah. I've got another 53 more down at Broad Beach, sandy bottom. There was one jetty across the other side and it didn't go back to the jetty. It took a silver jetty about that big right. and tried to go up the canal. I've caught them at uh, Cascade Gardens there in the same sort of area. Yeah, and it's that night, you get them out in the desert. Oh, 100%. That's the same. Yeah. Yeah. They're patrolling around. That's yeah. the same as I saying, like the early morning, same thing, Brian. They're, yeah. they're out there, but once that sun gets up a bit, the noise starts to happen, they all go back to their spots, you know. But um, in the night time there, if you can find a spot where there's rocks or structure all in the area, they are all in the area. And if we're in a boat, we'll move around maybe two or three times and get a couple, get a couple, get a couple, you know. Yeah. So they like the artificial light? Right? Um, okay, uh, they do because that holds the bait and holds them. Yeah. yeah, they don't mind it. And when I'm fishing the other night, I was telling you about the light, I don't mind. It's actually, the light's more of a pain in my eyes than, than scaring the fish. So it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. It's a gold yeah. Anyway. Well, that's the glitter, glitter yeah, strip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> but, um, but guys, um, when you're rigging up, it's important to, uh, you must have your bait on the bottom though. Okay, that's really important when you're bait fishing for um, jacks. So whether the current allows you to use a pea sinker, they use a pea sinker, and if, it, and if you have to use a seven or eight ball, or whatever it might be a big one like that, you need to use that size sinker. It's as simple as that. It has to be on the bottom there. Okay, and um, one thing I will say, the squid though, once the head's gone, they will take the body, but they don't take it as good. So um, they like to, if you get a brim picks the head off, um, they will take the body, if you do another cast out without a head and move the hook back a little bit further. Um, I have caught them that way when I'm desperate, got no squid left. Um, but generally speaking, um, they, they like another fresh squid with the head. So you've got to use a whole squid. Whole squid. Whole, okay. whole squid, not cut up. Yep. Big one. Yep, I'll probably get bombed on my front door tomorrow. <laughs> good to see you, Matt. <laughs> uh, but no, he's a real good fisherman, and I'm really thankful for him to teach me that back at that time because I would never thought frozen squid ever. You know, li live squid maybe, uh, which we use for chilies and stuff, but not um, not jacks. Yeah. So um, so getting back to the gear, hence why I use heavy stuff. So um, I fish a fairly heavy drag when I'm fishing uh, a bait uh, on my lines. And whether you'd be using, um, I wouldn't use much under about 20 or 30 pound braid, uh, preferably 50. Um, I don't know what size you're using, mate, on the, on the are you using? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, 14, 50, yeah. Because they, they really go hard and because and you're fishing that structure that they're going to smack you on, 
and you need to be able to pull them out of out of it. About too, yeah, well, they'll, yeah, they'll go hard for yeah. that. Yeah. So you've got to um, uh, fish accordingly, but you can't get there with brim rods and try and catch them. It won't work. Yeah. Fish heavy, fish big, and like we got, I think my biggest one probably on on the squids maybe 68, which is five is five kilo probably. I don't know if it was. Yeah. Pretty big. Yeah. Um, in saying that, I will tell you now, I've probably had my best catches around pontoons in, in the canals on chicken. So I think like the local local jack, <laughs> what he's eating, and it's generally chicken or, or steak. I've caught them on steak as well. Oh, no, no, bull crap. Um, Is that cooked or non-cooked? Ah, both. Bo uh, both. Medium both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a bit of pepper on it too, yeah. actually, the cracked pepper on it. But no, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I live on the canal, so I, I get to test a lot of <laughs> food out, and I've always got a line at the back. And uh, and the amount of fish I caught on unusual home cooking food is incredible. Yeah, and they like uh, cooked chicken more than than fresh chicken. Barbecue chicken's really good. Barbecue chicken's killer. A hundred percent. Smack them. And you turn that on, I'll share. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I've caught some big ones of barbecue chicken. Um, anyhow, but yeah, so not that we're selling barbecue chickens, but we sell squid. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'll just, um, I might just actually put a couple of hooks together. I'll get Stewie to do that while I'm talking to you. Oh, there's five hours through the two hours. So the hook, oh, hook sizes, okay. When you're fishing live baits, obviously if you're using little silver bitties, you don't put two A of those through, it doesn't work. So little silver bitties, um, I use a good hook, a good quality hook that's strong. That's not going to bend on 30 pound braid or 20 pound braid, and I give it a bit of stick, even 50 pound. Um, and I'll use two O's on a little silver bitty. As the fish gets a bit bigger, like a little mullet, I might go to three O's and, and up to about an eight if I'm using, say, a decent sized mullet. Even on those squid, we're using like six, seven or eights, you know, fairly big hooks. You uh, a single hook? No, double hook. Yeah. Double hook always. Um, in saying that though, um, on the silver bitties and that, yeah, I quite often want to use like a five O. Um, or two O or three O, depending if I'm using, um, singles, doubles I use two O's or three O's or four O's because they're smaller profile, two hooks in the fish. But if I've just got one hook, I'd be a bit bigger size and I'm generally hooking it through the head that way or through the mouth that way. Um, I never hook it in the back too much. I find in the current they get sideways and, and they, drown I, a bit they spin and, and it doesn't work yeah. very good, you know. Um, they, they live a lot longer if you do it through the nose or through the mouth. And they can still breathe. Don't put it through both though. But a dead fish though, if I'm using like a little dead potty or a dead whiting, diver whiting, um, I'll go in here and out, out there. If that makes sense. Underneath the throat and out through the nose between his eyes. Um, and yeah, that's how you do it. But Stu, do you wanna um, well, just have a listen to the hook? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Five is perfect, mate. That's us. Yeah. I'll do that on there. You got a pair of scissors. Yeah. Sorry guys. Now just a bit of housekeeping for um I'll squid jig in there. Right. Is that yeah. right? That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um when you got live baits, it's really hard to keep bait alive and it's hard to even get the live bait. So just either have a live well with a pump in it or if you haven't got that luxury, have a decent aerator. It's really important to have a decent aerator. Um In the square tank, mate. Yeah, okay. Yep. They go around in circles and around, around, around. Yeah. Probably. I reckon in bucket it probably say they, they probably get speed up. I don't know. Yeah. Trying to yeah. trying to find an end. That's why they get tired. Yeah. Where a, a one that shape, they sort of put their head and just bury it in there. <laughs> Keep just cruising. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in the aerators. Um, Try and get one that's, like the most of the cheaper ones, they'll suck up D batteries like crazy or C batteries. Um, get yourself one that's like this, that next grade up, um, your battery life goes from like six hours to about 30 hours. And most of them are two speed, so one will fast or, or slow air. And if you have um, a battery set up, like a 12 volt, or even if you've got your car parked on the riverbank, whatever, um, get yourself like a 12 volt one, they're much better again. Just so just run off the battery, you know. Um, and they're really good as well. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, 100% too. That's right, Brian. So, um, 
people don't understand that with live is if you change the water from, say they're in 28 and you drop them in 24, or cold, going cold is not too bad, but going hot is really bad. So yeah, you've got to, yeah, got to gradually build like it to that. Tank. Yeah, okay, yeah, like a fish tank. Yeah, is that right? Is that right, mate? Yeah. So do it that way. Um, I used sometimes do it many years ago, not so much these days, but I used to use a float with jacks as well um, when I was a bit younger, and um, just a float like that sort of thing there. Um, when you're float fishing, it's really important. People don't understand, but a float's not for you to be able to see if you're getting a bite or not. It doesn't work that way. People think that's what they're designed for, but it's designed to keep the fish off the bottom. That's what they're designed for. So um, if you're going to, maybe if you're blackfish fishing, it's different, but when you're gar fishing or when you're um, live bait fishing for mackerel or, or bait fishing for mackerel or, or jacks, um, the idea is to keep the bait off the bottom suspended and you should always weight your float so it's very easy for the fish to take it under the water. Yeah, minimal yeah, resistance. Minimal resistance is number one. And if you use, um, obviously use, uh, you'll know what a little um, float stopper is. It's like a little bead you put on your line and then you tie it on, thread it through the float and tie it on your swivel. The bead sits above here and you slide this little silicon bead up and that float goes up and that's as far as it goes for the depth, if that makes sense. So um, that needs to be able to sit on top of there and the float's nearly under the water. Okay, because that's, as Stuart was saying, when that fish comes along, it'll pull the line down, that stop hits that, and if it's still too far out of the water like that, um, it'll feel resistance and it'll just let go, most fish will let go and swim away. They don't know about it, because it's, it's something not right, you know. But if it's weighted down to there in the water, and the fish grab it, it'll just easily go under the water, they don't feel much resistance, and they'll scoff it. So please remember, it's not for you to look at, it's for the, it's to hold the fish up off the bottom. Okay. That's in all fishing too. Yeah. Um, what else are we talk about? Uh, Stewie, we've got the rigs there. We've got your rigs there, Doug. Yep. So there's two, I tied two, so we've got a couple of different baits. So the biggest thing when you're tying a snell is you've got to think about the size of your bait. And yep. um, if you've got four different liveys in the bucket and there's like a little silver bead and then a wide in that big and a mullet that big, you're going to have to tie three different rigs. You can't use the same rig for all of them. Um, and that's just important just to have the right hook point exposed and the right distance. The biggest thing is with any bait, you don't want to bend. You want it nice and straight. You want it very natural. Because um, if you bend a livey or whatever, they're just going to die. Same thing if you put the hook too deep, um, they'll die as well. So just pin it on a livey, on a dead bait like a squid or any other dead fish you got, it doesn't matter how deep you go. But um, yeah. Has anybody got a fry pan? <laughs> Looks fresh. <laughs> um, okay, so um, that's the squid there, if you can see it, where you guys are. So I'm always going to start my, see this ice off here, it doesn't drip everywhere. Um, I always start my bottom hook about a bit over hook length up from the, from the bottom here. Sorry for the guys down the back if you can't see it, but you'll be able to see it on there, I think. Um, but I push it in about there, this is the bottom hook. I pull, pull the whole hook out. I then go back through the hood just before the, the head and then I pop it out and stick it through the head, if that makes sense, like so. So it's sitting like that, okay, with the barb exposed in the middle of the head there. Then the top one here, as Stuart said, you've got to measure it out for the right length. He's done this perfect. And just through the top of the hood, don't go down here, because if you go down there, it'll spin the current. It needs to be up as high as you can get it up the top here and just pin it. And actually, like, um, we use a lot of time if we're fishing, uh, particularly I did it in Malaysia once, um, we we're fishing for sailfish and using live squid about double that size. We used a little tiny 5 o circle and we always hooked it in the hardest part of the squid, which is right at the top of the hoodie. That's it, one hook. And 99% hook up rate. So it does need to have hooked down here in, in live situation, you know, hook up there. Um, so th that's the hardest part of the squid, and that's how the hook rig looks. So I don't know if I can put that into a the bag here somewhere. I'll go and grab some paper towel if you want. Uh, I don't know if I've got a bit of paper here, man. Oh, it's an old map, but that'll do. Oh, hang on, you've got two baits, don't you? Oh, I've got two baits here, sorry. Just try not to pull in the skies, it comes around. So 
Looks like so. Some people say that I face one hook one way on the other way. Um, I don't like to do that. I like them both facing the same way. That's the way I like to do it. Thanks, man. Catering. That's it. <laughs> Catering, yeah, that's right. This is, the, this is a snack. Intermission. So the next one I'm going to bring up is just a pilcher, but just imagine it's a, a yakker or a slimy. Now, if you guys have the luxury of keeping yakkers and slimies alive, um, they are so good in marinas and along, say, Port Marion or something like that, where you've got a rock wall um, and you can fish Bayview Harbour wall. Um, if you go to the trouble to get out and care, they, they, they survive a long time. They last a lot better than herring, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, they're hardy. If you go to the trouble to yeah. get out and get them, yeah. they last. They do last well, that's right. So when I hook a livey up, um, um, like a live whatever it may be, uh, my first hook's going to go in just below halfway, just below that point there. And this is how I do it. I don't actually go through the, through to his spine. I go just above the spine. And I try and get the hook there as much as I can. And I just stick it out the side like, like that. Okay. And then this hook here, um, I'll just put in his nose. I try and pinch it through. There's a, there's a soft part of his nose and a hard part. If you get too close to the eyes, it's the soft part. And if you get where his nostrils are, it's a little bit soft as well. You need to get that hard part between his nostril and his eye. Um, and it will, it's very hard to pop off there because sometimes you know if you um, use live baits, they wiggle around a lot, especially if you've got a fish up their backside. And um, quite often they'll flick that first hook out and then you, and you miss the fish, you wind up and the back hook's always still attached and it comes up sideways in the current. Um, but if you get that right spot, it's very hard for it to flick out and it works heaps better. But it all comes with um, practice. Now these ones, um, the hook is the opposite way. Okay. My thinking of that is, um, if they do a head shot, um, it's facing that way. If they grab it from behind, the hooks out the side um, is much better hook up rate than the hooks through the whole body, which I used to do many years ago when I was a young guy. But another fellow taught me how to do it this way, and the, and this is um, whether it be for jacks or, or for a marlin or anything, it's really good. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay, have a look when it comes around. Any questions, please ask me. Um, Stu, what else are we going to talk about, man? Um, yeah, like obviously boat anchoring is a big oh, thing. Yeah. So yeah. when you are predominantly bait fishing, you try to find a spot, whether it be a hole or a rock bar or overhanging tree or anything, and um, anchor up current from it and fish back onto it. And like we were saying before, you fish that pressure side of it. You don't want to fish over the back of the snag and fish in that old water that's been over the snag already. Um, the fish are going to be patrolling on that front face of it. So you want to fish back onto it. So it yep. could be like bridge pylons, yep. anything. Um, yeah. If I can give you another little secret too, um, it, and I don't know about land based mate, but if you if you have access to catching, say around February, March, when the jacks are still going hard, um, and get yourself some big banana prawns, they just absolutely yeah, really can't c control themselves. Yeah. But it's not yeah. the broom as well and the catfish. But <laughs> but you get a lot of jacks amongst them, and uh, you just hook those straight through. That's one fish you do hook through the, through the middle here. Through the pin it through the front, uh, through the highest arch of his back, straight dead centre. Thanks, mate. And um, and prawns live fairly. If you get the good aeration and, and cool, uh, keep them in the sun, they'll live quite a long time. And um, they're quite ag aggressive and active when you put them in the water. They're very flicky and very very crazy. And if you can drop them back to a snag, especially if you've got not too much current that lasts the run out, or to a bridge pylon or a hole, like Stewie's saying. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, or downstream, even under a float, um, they, they just get absolutely smacked. Yeah, single hook, um, around about a 5 or a 4 and prawns from about, say, 75, 100 mil up to around about 200, if you can get it. Okay. Yep. I but think the biggest thing is it's all, a lot of the stuff that you can't see as well. There's a lot of structure. That's where the sounders do play the part. Um, like classic example, the Sovereign and Ephraim Island bridges, they fish really well, like around the um, pylons that go down. But those pylons, they're not that square rectangle shape the whole way down. They're only that for the top part. And underneath that, they're actually on like stilts. 
that there's a lot of structure underneath them um, for fish to hide around and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's what you can't see that you know that's there, but um, that's a big thing as well. It's lots of cover. Yeah. Yeah. What I started doing last year with that was not like learning where you're fishing, but I eliminated the swivel and I was going uh, line to direct to leader and leaving a big tag, like a, a quarter inch tag on my mono, on my fluoro, yep. and drilling out my sinkers so that when he was dragging me into that snag, it took me like a couple of weeks to figure him out, but it was, I would pull the, the sinker would pull over my knot. And when it was back down to the fish, I had a, a higher rate yeah. of getting him back out. Yeah. I, was, I didn't have tackle catching the log that I knew I was fishing. Yeah. It just, mm. the keep Helps. going, keep going. You yeah. Know, like yeah. You yeah. Sort of but when, when you lose a lot of fish in consistency, you need to try and think yeah. the next yeah. level. Yeah. And, it's like, yeah. and where are you losing? Like, what point are you losing it? Mm. Yeah. It was, it was because it was must have been a fork in a tree or whatever it was mm. that yep. kept taking that swivel point. Yep. Yeah, once I changed that, it made my sinker be able to go full past the knot. Yep. Yeah. Had so, yeah. Like, had a big seat. Yep. Yeah. So just with your, um, just, just remind me of knots there, Brian. So with your knot, you lead it to your braid. Um, the, there's an array of different knots you want to use. Um, what do you like to use to? I always use an FG. I think it goes through the guides a lot nicer. Um, and if any of you want to learn how, I'll show you afterwards or pop down in the shop and I'll run it through. It's not a hard knot. It's a little bit of a process, but once you know how to tie one, it's quick and easy. I just use a uni knot. It was easy and quick. I can do it in the dark with the eyes closed. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, anything else to illustrate? Um, that's about it, I think, really. Yeah, I think yeah. that's about it. Um, I don't use circle hooks much on the live, you know, the two guys, not yep. when I'm fishing for jacks. Yep. The little uh, suicide hooks, the best octopus hooks. Yep. hooks. Yep. Just because the way a circle hook works, you've got to feed them line and things like that, and you don't want to give a jack anything. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. So mm. just use a normal J hook or a suicide octopus hook. And um, yeah. So guys, Thanks. I'm going to give you guys a bit of a, um, a, a challenge. So out of the people that are here tonight, so I've got all your emails, <laughs> um, I want you guys to try and get, whoever gets a good jack, like send in the photo, and if we get quite a few similar jacks, you got until the 31st of December, okay? So, and whichever the best jack is, if you get, if you get like say five that are all 44 centimetres, um, we'll pull one over a hat, but, um, and preferably on a break event so I can see the size of it, because um, I want you guys to, to show me produced after hearing tonight <laughs> and uh and we'll have a couple of bucks for the hard body lures that we'll send out to you whoever gets the best one okay so if you don't mind having a shot at doing that'd be great yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to have good looking eyes <laughs> yeah no cloudy eyed ones yeah. yeah i remember the old teacher telling me about the gentleman in the back there i think once before at school <laughs> No, all good. No, that'd be great. If you can do that, guys. So, um, yeah, so you got to 31st December, send your pictures in at any time between now and then. Uh, would be great. Okay. Good. Okay, we're going to do this every th on every species. So yeah. Sort of try. Okay, but so any questions at all? We're about to do the draw now. Okay. Do you, do you fish your life is weighted? Weighted? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, so as I said before, it depends on the current. So you're I oh, know land base as well. Yeah. Land base as well. So it depends on whether I want my line to go back to that area with the current or whether I want to just pin it or whether I you know, might just float it on a float, which I used to use lots of when I was younger, and suspend it, you know. Um, but eventually the current catches up to that and it'll pull it up, right? So you've got to fish it at the right tide. Yeah. And that's what I was saying before, whether I'm using um, whatever bait I'm using. Um, I like that last hour, the run out, the bottom. It's a little bit quiet in the bottom time, you get a lot of brim and stuff like that. But as soon as it starts trickling in again, I'll, I'll come back on the chew. Yeah, but so um, at that stage of tide, you can use nearly no weight. And when it when it drops off, I'll use no weight. Yeah. Yeah, and same as on those squid too, if you have the luxury of using a boat, um, uh, you drift, drift down with your lights turned off at night time, <laughs> past everyone's jetty, just floating the squid out just on unweighted and just drift past their jetties and hang on. 
Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah, you'd be surprised how hard they go for the size of the fish. They're so strong. Like, look at their tail, it's just built for power and speed. And uh, Do not try to thumb grip them or anything. Use a set of lip grips or yeah. a rag to hold them or whatever because yeah. they'll rip your fingers off. Like They're savage. Mm. But yeah. Mm. yeah. They're always, as, as one of the gentlemen said before, they're always looking at you when you catch them the net, running right at you. Yeah. And they, they look at you and their mouth is going, thunk, 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 like you hear it just yeah, snapping snap. like that. Yeah. And they're trying to fight whatever's coming near it. <laughs> yeah. And they're aggressive. It's aggressive. And they're really good eating, by the way. Um, there's one, uh, one in the picture you might have seen on this Facebook thing we just did for this, for this seminar. That one I got uh, about a month ago. I was up, but that was a reef one. So it was 75 centimetres. That was about probably seven, eight, seven kilo, I guess, a bit longer. Um, that one got a little 5,000. And I just flicked a pilly out the anchor in a lagoon at night on the reef. And, um, and there's lots of bombies there. I didn't know I was going to have Jack, going to get Jack. And, uh, and it hit my rod and it went down under the boat. And it's, I had 300 metres, I brand new, I just put the line on. And I was right down to like maybe 20 metres, so 280 metres out around all the, all the bombies. And I managed to get it back, took me about 30 minutes. Mm. It was such a great, fun fight. <laughs> and there was a big Jack come on going, holy jeez. And yeah, it was nice eating. Uh, but I was around about there, yeah, 75 centimetres. I put it on the mat and measured it. So I don't expect anything that big, and I've never caught one. I think my biggest in the Gold Coast here might be around, I think actually probably on the squid around 68. That's probably it. I did get one of my backyard that was 64. I live on the Narang River. Some big ones here. I don't really live on the Narang River, but I don't know I'm catching my pets, you know. <laughs> it's funny, when you, when you live on the water, you, you think, you never keep anything out of your backyard. You could always put it back, you know, or you actually transport fish from another area into your area and, and cultivate it. Um, but you never keep them. But you go, so this is Jetty, that will go back into the esky, you know. So, yeah, it's funny how it works. <laughs> um, anyhow, that's it. We'll do the draw. Any questions on anything fishing at the moment? Anyone got any questions on anything? Hit us up. Just when you're trolling, yes. so you're trolling through the mangroves, yes. say not the jetty, but you're still, even though the lure's like in the wrong direction of the mangrove roof is running, you're still hitting yeah. it as hard as you... When, when you're trolling, it's a different scenario like I was saying before, they tend to just take a chance, Brian, they'll, they'll come zipping out and grab it. But you've still but, got the but, rod, as, if you're in pole position on the boat, so yeah, you've yep. got, yep. still got it as close as possible. <sighs> if, if it's a steep bank, but I don't like trolling shallow, muddy sandy bank yeah, edges yeah. it's got to be steep it's like un bad. even un undergrowth yeah, under dugout sort of thing yeah. you want that drop here like like it's on the sound it's like five foot deep or six foot deep um but i'll get I, i'll be honest i haven't caught well i have up, the, up north i've caught lots of trawling in that scenario but down here i haven't caught much in that scenario um i've caught lots of trawling rock bars rock walls and around bridges down here um, yeah. But not so much along the edge of mangroves. Casting, got lots. But, but even along the rock walls, you just let it, you can feel it hitting a rock. Oh, uh, yeah, um, you can, and it, it does bump the bottom, but you get snagged. You've got to have a tackle back with you, yeah. and a big one. So it gets down the current and gets your lure off. Um, the tackle back slides down your line like a flying fox, guys, and, and it's, it just hooks onto the snap or onto the front of the lure or onto the hooks. Um, some have chain on, the hook, chain gets caught, caught on the hooks. And you just keep, you got, got it on a little hand reel, so you hold it above your rod, keep your rod real tight, and, and hold the hand reel, and this goes boom, down like that, you just keep jerking the hand reel, but it goes down, and then you just keep pulling on it, and keeping the boat in reverse, because the current's ripping, of course, and then you'll feel it get tight, and it hooks on, and then you just pull it, or just put it in your neutral, let the current pull it off, or pull up whatever's on, something like a crab pot, you get whatever it might be. Yeah. And that's and your recovery rate's about as I said, eighty or ninety percent. Tackle back's like twenty, thirty bucks. Like I've got a BB cord. Yeah, like Dacron or yeah. BB cord. You can't yeah. go yeah, 130 pound Dacron's yeah. really good, 80 pound Dacron's even really good. Don't use braid, it'll cut your hands. Yeah. Um, and um, it's, even 80 pound you sometimes you can't. I have broken off tackle backs trying to get off the bottom. <laughs> I broke my line. Um, but yeah, you need to be not too thick because that'll get caught in the current and it gets a belly in it and it doesn't hook up as good. So it needs to be like, yeah, 130 pound bray, uh, Dacron the most. Yeah. yeah. Which is about 1.5 mil. Yeah, it's pretty BB thick, top yeah. Cord. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. No, it puts them off, and the water goes all dirty, goes all yucky. If it's humid, though, I've put them in dirty water. Um, but uh, yeah, it, you smell the fresh water like it smells like you got the dam. That, that this, they're not there. Yeah. They were well, there, but they're sulking. Whatever they do. Yeah. I, I anything, believe they go out to sea or something like that. You know. Yeah. Or go offshore, and they come back. I think they yeah. do that. And yeah, they must. Rain, they tend to move maybe further up the system. Um, no, because it's dirty. It's, oh, if it doesn't rain, yeah, yeah. I believe they go yeah. right up the system. Yeah. Right up where it's salty and nice, you know. Yeah, and lots they, of bait. That, yeah. They like very salty water. Very salty. Like the last really mm. good year that we had on Jacks was two years ago. Probably. And that was about, the yeah. year that we had no rain and mm. none. And everyone was going out catching heaps. And um, everything was really salty. The broad water was like crystal clean. It was really nice. Mm. And um, yeah, it's just jacks everywhere. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, after all that rain, they probably just go a bit deeper. Like fresh water floats okay. on the mm. salt water, so they just try your deeper stuff or troll in more. And mm. It's trolling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. If it's a flood, though, no. Go mud crab. Yeah. Put mud crab pots out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's get that bag out. Any other questions, guys? Okay, this weekend, Saturday's um, absolutely horrid weather. I think tomorrow comes in like 35, 40 knots, maybe. Thanks, so. um, and, uh And then it's Saturday's 25 yeah. knots. And then Sunday morning, there's like a little tiny gap. It might be around 10 or 15. And then it comes up in the afternoon again. So let's make sure the number's there. Though. I saw a three in here. Yeah, I saw a three in here. <laughs> I was trying to call it. Okay, he's not here. <laughs> um, so anyhow, um, yeah, this weekend it's it's so so. It's I don't know what the word. Wind's so bad, so bad recently. Yeah, mm. yeah. global warming. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is, but it's terrible. Um, but at the moment, yeah, it's jacks, jacks, and jacks. While it's humid like this, 100 percent. As long as I don't get too much rain, but they're talking like 100 mil tomorrow, I think, or something. So I don't know, see so here we go. Um, that'll, that'll make it a bit shitty. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh yeah, bullies, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, they're good this time of year. Um, and uh, yeah, heaps of flatties still around though, guys, the flatties aren't too bad though. Heaps of whiting around, the whiting's been incredible this year. Uh, you been again, Dave? Yeah. No, I haven't. been again? No, no, no I haven't heard of it. Oh. And? So what are you doing, let's go. <laughs> I think it's a flatty comp. <laughs> Actually, yeah. the other day I was walking around the Monaco Lake there. Yes, oh, yep, yep. Um, Waters. Yes, yep. And um, right near the outlet pipe, there were five bull sharks swimming around. Oh, was there really? Right on high tide. And how big are they, mate? Oh, about 90 uh, centimetres. On the, on the, in the lake. On the lake side. Were they really? Yeah. Yeah, well, they're in there forever because there's, there's grill on yeah. there, I think. Yeah. Oh, there's a flap on there, isn't there? Uh, on the no, pipe? I think it's just an open pipe. Open pipe, is it? Okay. I see people crazy swimming and dogs swimming in there. Well, I actually <laughs> met a couple of people with their dogs that I had, I had in the lake. Mm, yeah. That's right. Mm. Anyhow, be careful bull sharks are everywhere. Um, so this weekend, yeah, guys, I don't forget. Who offshore fishers here? Anyone offshore fish normally? Yeah, you do? Yeah, so, mate, um, this weekend's probably right off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Jacks. Jacks, flatties, and whiting. And maybe sand crab. Okay. Uh, so would you recommend a charter? Oh, sorry, mate. A charter. A charter for Jacks? Yeah. I'll probably say Brad Smith for 100%. Okay. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you used Brad at all? Sorry. Have you been with Brad on I Jacks? No. I, I, I see him on Facebook all the time. I've known him for many years, and he's always been like the Jack guru on yeah. the charters. Yeah. Okay. Um, especially on lure fishing. He's really good on lures. Um, he does a nighttime one as well. No, I don't think he does nighttime. Uh, he I may. Think he does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. 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 But he'll go, he, sometimes he'll go down the Tweed or Crumbin or yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, or, yeah, around this area. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Okay, we'll do the draw. Guys, thanks for coming along too. I hope you learn a little bit. Uh, our next seminar is on dolphin fish. Thanks, They're all there. Yep, okay, cool. And um, which is on next Thursday, I think.
It is. Yeah, yeah, first over 18. Okay. Yep. Um, but in the interim, guys, if there's anything you need to know about, you can probably come up with all these lures. We will go straight downstairs, though, once we've done this now. Um, and um, we'll be open for about half an hour. Okay. And um, what else is there? Not much else to say. No, that's about it. So give it a shot. It is early in the jack season, so it's early days. The water temperature is a bit slower this year and heating up for some reason. Um, so that's global warming the other way around. Global cooling. Cooling, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but it is a bit later. Um, it will, once it gets to around about in the canals, around 28 and up the river about 26, that's when they really start to come on the tube, or 27. Um, and I said, get that late afternoon, uh, low tide, and you guys are in for it, or early morning. Stewie, I'm a sucker, do you enjoy it? You can draw the next one. Yeah. Okay, this is for the first prize, guys, which is about 300 bucks or just around about that, I think.